last time, our deft and valiant heroes, well, you did some interviews, you learned some details, you managed to carefully navigate your way around the situation once more. And now you found yourself, none other than at Kalmane, a delightful little town located in Nawasha territory, a nation, or what remains of a nation, that does not like your presence. The population here is mostly ape folk low to the ground, often squat individuals. The houses and architecture reflects it accordingly, and you have arrived, if I recall correctly, late at night. No corrections? An affirmation is appreciated. We were on the road, so we might as well ar arrive at night, yes. <laughs> well, actually, I think we've been doing something a bit more active. Or we're chasing a... Yeah, last time we saw while chasing after one of their vehicles and getting the info. You were in hot pursuit of a specific vehicle containing several kidnapped individuals. The purpose of this kidnapping has yet to reveal itself to you, but it's going to be something wild, to be sure. I'm starting to think it might be just some sort of red flag. Ahead. I mean, that's possible, but you did get transponder information that implies that there is a vehicle that landed here recently that came out of the direction of Greater Port Town. So. No, no, what I mean is they uh, basically said, hey, it would be, wouldn't it be cool? For us to force a resolution as we got abducted. It's like, oh no, locals are assholes. <clears throat> anyway, you drive your way through Nawasha. Well, Komane specifically. Komane is a bigger city. It's located on the edge of the area, and due to its proximity to several rivers, it is filled to the brim with industrial sites. Canal boats go up and down the splitting delta, and you more than often not cross a bridge and watch the light of the lanterns and posts dance off the river below. All in all, it gives this place an otherworldly feel, combined with its darker clouds and overhanging smoke. Many factories are still active, and even mm. through your fine car you can hear the machines inside slamming together, creating trinkets for a price. Such primitive ways compared to your means. I just want to bash things together. Your transponder information indicates that the vehicle you are looking for is located in one of the airport hangars. Soon uh, enough, your vehicle blood. parks outside. A large concrete wall surrounds this particular site. Not uncommon, given that these massive rotary planes they have, they knock shit over all over the place. So they're often surrounded by things that keep the dust from hitting people in the eye. So this is not like an uncommon site. I mean... Yeah, that makes sense, because the gravity here is 1.3 of Earth, they would need more powerful engines. Which would be Actually, because the, the, because the atmosphere is thicker, it's easier for rotary engines to function. Because it's like being underwater, you know? The denser the material, the, the denser the medium, the easier it is for a rotary system to function. That's well, also true. you have a higher density of a combustible material. Yeah. And don't forget yeah. that, like, the helicopter on Mars was like a, a shot in the dark. Effectively. Worked out, though. Because Mars has a lighter atmosphere. So... You're parked directly outside, in front of this building. Mm. There's like a little guard post in front of the big metal doors that help seal up the place, but other than that, you don't see any particular guards. If there is a vehicle here, it has already landed or is already taken off, as you do not hear the rows of an engine in the distance, or anywhere near. Okay, I would like to let out the drone and scout the area. As your little drone goes up and hovers closer towards it, it begins to experience a very telltale crackle. There is a Mindscape Jammer located in this area somewhere. And with a little bit of triangulation, you can figure out that it is centered on this particular location. Your drone functions, but its vision is impaired. The closer you get to the center. So you hover it over to the wall, and it peeks inside. It's a typical industrial terrain. There's a few fenced areas where you can put your barrels and your crates and all your funny business. There's a few places where you could park the vehicle after landing it and rolling it inside. There's only one vehicle, however, that is properly parked in this location, and it is that rotary vehicle that I showed you the last time, that big, chunky boy, with its three rotary engines. It is surrounded on all sides by individual carrying arms, and all of them, these are way more, like before, you've seen Fivers, they've mostly been like street punks at most. Maybe they've had a firearm on them. These guys are in full combat gear, right down to the night vision goggles. They don't, they don't look like civilian security at all. In fact, they're heavy, more heavily armed in an extent than the Ulsak security you've seen. Makes sense. Would the Gemma affect us as well? Uh, 
Probably. You, you would be at risk of, like, properly experiencing mind, Mindscape severance, but... So far, your drone still seems to work, and your drone functions on the same network, so if it works, it's probably fine. Yes. If you happen to have a portable Mindscape instance, consider using it. I believe I did purchase one. Let me check in a moment. I don't, I don't think, think we've filled it out. <clears throat> so, so far, they appear to be ignoring your drone, which makes sense if I haven't mentioned it so far, because it hasn't really come up too much. In most denser areas, there's usually these small news drones floating around. You know how people always are like, there's drones everywhere, they're monitoring us, they're keeping us control. Now here's just drones with cameras all over the place. Just I'm for just the like, news. Whatever. Like, imagine if all those influencers, all those wannabe YouTubers were like, just drones flying around. They aren't. Mm, they don't fly. Okay, point. What if you kick them hard enough? Briefly. Yeah. And as Buzz Lightyear said, it's more like graceful crashing. <laughs> it's falling with style. Yes, I forgot what he said in Dutch, but... The, the Dutch dubs are surprisingly good, as are the voice actors. And they, they, they carried and it showed. Also, in case you forgot, you have been informed that your technical boss liaison localized big boy, Dian Isango, is located on the plane. And if he gets his ass killed or injured in any way, that's gonna... He won't hold back at that point. But what? Okay, you so... cut out. Who is gonna be? Dian Isango. Uh, our boss, Dian Isango. The guy who is already fed up with everyone here. Oh, I know. The golden asshole. I know that, it's just that the microphone cut out and I can't hear No, I just had to keep always saying it whenever his name gets dropped. Because he is. Because you are trained as CIA agents, I will tell you that it is entirely likely that if they do have hostages, they will probably not relent with executing hostages as is necessary to secure their mission. Alright, can I... Due to the fact that we have the Mindscape and access to their internet stuff... Yeah. Do we have schematics on this building? Now... Here's the funny business. Technically speaking, if we're going above the books, Mindscape integration out here is not as good. You don't have access to their internet unless you have one of their iPhones or the little headband things. So, uh, it, it's probably not on the Mindscape. You're way too far away, and these people don't like it. So, Shit, man, go steal someone's phone. What? <laughs> Just so we can get on the internet. I'm joking, though. Don't, don't actually do that. Argus. Okay. Como. Yes. And, and Chelilus. Yapitus. Yes. Whichever one it is. It's Yapitus. Yapitus. Considering that you are good enough with technology, you would probably have identified that this inter if there's drones flying around, your car might have such integrations. That makes sense. So as long as we stay within the range of the car, it's going to be fine. No, I mean that you could use the car to access their internet. Like the local oh, sure. infoscape. Info okay, fair enough. Also, yeah. considering that our characters are trained agents and we're not, what would be the standard procedure for this sort of situation? What do you mean standard? Pro Hostage situations aren't exactly standard for your procedure. What do you want to know? Well, they probably still learned it, it taught us something. Um, specifically, how much power can we use to free our buddy? Okay, so let's... Not much force, exactly. Now, technically, I already posted the stuff on this. No. And it goes a little something like this. Don't try to kill people. If you have to, don't kill people. But if you absolutely <laughs> have to, only the ones you can't help. Okay. <laughs> I think I already posted that. I forgot what it's called, but it shows up somewhere. There's like a little fee section of like, please... Let me, let me look it up for you so I can give you the specific. But basically, if you can help it, avoid murder where possible. Yeah. If only because, if not because of like the sanctity of life principle, for the fact that this will be a, quite a diplomatic disaster if you start shooting heavy artillery directly in like range of explosive containers. Yes. Oh, stun rifle it is then. Also, yeah, if you could uh, <laughs> try to get those schematics for the building, that would be helpful. The blueprints. That too. Okay, so, well, we have the outline of the buildings, uh, the general layout from the drone. Let's check the uh, the base for the car internet. Oh, here we go. 
first level is dissuasive measures using non-lethal force, knockout grades, concussion grenades, stun guns. Equivocal measures are null weapons, kino weapons, blasters, anything, but your goal is more to disable equipment than people. Uh, when using equi oh, oh, here we go. Um, if you have escalated to equivocal measures, uh, the common ally doesn't really care if the opposing personnel are injured or killed. It would rather they not, but at this point, they've already made their case. Yeah, well, in my case, it's going to be more, give me a fucking excuse. And then unequivocal measures, it's like, hey, you want to throw a micro nuke on them? It's great. I mean, Please, no, but I can park a spaceship on top of them. You will never, you will not get permission for unequivocal measures of only because there's only four of you. <laughs> you do not have the authorization to do this. I know, that's <clears> fine. <throat> I mean, I can still threaten it. It's not like they know all the legal eyes. Can you tell us again if um, the the building is uh, isolated, isolated, or if there is uh, there are other buildings uh, around uh, that may contain something uh, interesting? Yeah. Oh, I mean, that there's like probably like a few hangars side by side. Uh, a few hangars, okay. Which is to say, like a few of these concrete walls with metal and gates and everything. Because I was thinking that uh, maybe your big gun combo is. Uh, not completely uh, out of the question. You could know, probably uh, shoot uh, another building to uh, set up yeah. as, uh, a distraction. Exactly, we just need to find the <laughs> empty one. Shooting the other building still might be a bad plan because it could hurt people there. Yeah, but like I said, an occupied building. If we can find an, a definitely an occupied building, it, it disappearing very dramatically could Come serve on. as a lesson. Yes. Can I get a recon roll from you? You can roll? Yes, absolutely. Let me check. <laughs> you're a little, you're, as you've been having this little chit chat, <coughs> your little machine, which don't forget, is sentient enough that it can identify things, is trying to draw your attention to something. It isn't moving from its current like hover position, but. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Also, sorry for interrupting, Fulham. I was. Oh, there. Here, 10. Okay, well, mm -hmm. even with the minus two penalty for, you know, the interfering connection, your drone is trying to call attention to the fact that the large carrier is currently connected to a fuel line. Okay. Okay, so they're 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 basically using this as a stop stopping point for a moment. Mm, they suppose they have microfusion technology, but it's possible that maybe those are traced or something. Maybe. I mean, it's radioactive elements. You would probably. <laughs> I mean. Wait, if you if you, if you have fusion, no, it's not radioactive. But yeah, it could be probably easier to track. I mean, to be honest, you have like your weapons are fueled by small zip zip drives. I think they're called. Zero uh, point energy inertia, something, um, and they're you can basically use them as like micro grenades if you disconnect them the right way. Yeah. But you're not required to like those things are everywhere. Yes. No, what I meant is if they're using something specifically high tech on the planet that is low tech, relatively speaking, it would be easier to try, especially mm -hmm. if it's radioactive. No, microfusion is just a standard technology they use around here. I know. So why they're using fuel then? So, I could try to get into advantage position because I can use my bow for stunning because I can electrify people. I could also try to figure out where there's like a power junction and turn the power off in the place. Because do you guys have dark vision? Do you guys have upgrades for that? Because I do. I don't believe I do. Although no, I don't. <laughs> it's strange. Oh, my eyes can see in the dark. I am sure. Uh, generally, for me, that would be the drone doing the, the, the work, probably. But the main point is I can cause some disruptions. Mm -hmm. And then we can try to take out the hostage uh, holders first. And then we can go for the people that don't have hostage. Okay. Uh... From what we know, how long would it take um, to refuel that um, helicopter? <clears throat> a while, probably. Judging by your transponder information, it's not been here that long. And considering that these guys are still standing outside, it might take a minute. Otherwise, they'll okay. be backing up, huh? Well, I've been thinking of using the drone to see what sort of patrols they have. And to see if we can actually like disable them one by one. <coughs> As of right now... Most of them just seem to be standing in like a little radial pattern around the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, another question. I have a speaker drone. How loud can it shout? 
if you know how loud it could sh eventually drone? shout. Yes, the drone. It can it drone. make a noise? I Oh, well, I mean, it can probably beep really loud, but I don't think it's specifically like a PA system. I mean, it might come with one. Some drones come with, like, PA systems. Well, would you yes, say uh, mine does? Uh, I was referring to, to, to mine because I have two uh, two drones that can uh, help, oh, me, help me. Okay. And one is a speaker drone that uh, can speak a ton of languages. <laughs> would it be disabled if it goes closer? Because uh, there's a mind jammer, uh... mindscape. Uh, excuse me. Well, there's a mindscape jammer. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Which is one of the things I was going to be looking for. So the plan so far is. Disable enough guards to get in, find a jammer, disable the jammer, then move in. Well, I'm going to first try to I'm gonna get up onto... Because every one of these hangars has like a catwalk, you know, for dealing with bigger things. Yep. Well, the hangars do. I'm this gonna... thing is located on the outside helipad. Oh, okay. Well, but the power is coming from the hangar, right? The what coming? The uh, fuel line. The fuel line is coming from the hangar, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to get into the hangar and I'm going to check for the fuel line in that because the jammer is probably coming from that same area. Yeah, that would be a more consistent power source instead of using internal power. Also, and then we can cause an... Hmm? Even if it was a microfusion reactor, I would like to point out the fusion reactor still uses materials to function. Like, I know that Como wanted to make a point about this, but fusion reactors use helium or hydrogen, and those are expended when they are used. No, I know that, but they use those elements, and they're essentially radiation-free, generally. Anyway... Your plan is to do what with the fuel lines? Okay, so I want to get in there. And if we can uh, disable the fuel, then they'll probably have to send someone to go check on it. If we don't do it very outwardly, it would just look like a you know a problem because they're lower tech. And that could get rid of a couple of the guards. What are they going to report? A fox chewed from the cabling? Well, I mean, they have to go into the hangar. Mm. Which, by the way, is closed because they're not parking inside. So, door's closed. Which is to say and they then, can't look inside. Not like it's locked or anything. You don't know that, but... Yeah, once I break that and turn off the power to the hangar, uh, you guys go around one side, I hit the other side, we take out the hostage holders as quick as possible without lethal force, mm -hmm. and then we get in. Okay. This way we've disabled their vehicle as well, at least for the long distance. All right. Okay. I'll follow your lead then. Any ideas from you guys? Because this is just a quick plan. Um, I mean, I mostly agree with it. What do we do if you get uh, detected? <laughs> uh, well, if I get detected, they'll probably send more people after me. So get the hostages. <laughs> no. <okay>. From <laughs> what I've seen with the drone, how many people do they have in general? Oh, finally, someone asked me how many there actually are. Oh, I was waiting for the drone person to ask it. It's not my info. Fella, you're... If, if, if I ever have to deal with one more person who says, but that's not my character, and then I'm going to tell them for the thousandth time, you can have your character tell someone else to ask a question. <laughs> I mean, I asked that earlier. I said, like, what sort of patrols they have in that. So... Oh, I thought you meant, like, specific directions, not, like, the people themselves. Anyway, I don't have a number here right off the cuff, but to be fair, that does make sense. Let's see. Roll a dice. Um... Well, even for that, I wouldn't know how many people it takes to kidnap. Also, Zyla, do you have night vision? I don't know, but I'm going to steal it from that guy. <laughs> I mean, on the plus side, you probably could. Well, I don't know how can, much... Uh... Can you imagine? We, 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 we disable three guys, we just t take their clothes, and then we just go replace them for a moment. Or we just ride with these guys, whatever they're going. Taking a quick overlook, there appears to be about... It's hard to make out with all the crackling happening on your systems. Six people? But mm -hmm. they uh, they look ready to fight. And so are we. Are you? Did you pack all your big guns and all your big armor? I take got my bow. Take out your little Iron Man suitcase. Well, seeing as my shock suit only weighs one kilogram, can't be that big. But up, up, up. Your flashback <laughs> weighs like four, uh, three and a half <laughs> in modern day. So. Gosh. So I'm gonna get my shock suit on. 
because it gives me some more electrosi. Nice. And I got my bow. So you're just getting out of the car on a public road and immediately start jacking yourself up with equipment? No, not, not immediately on the side of the public road. Well, then please inform me what you're doing, because apparently I'm not on, on, on the, 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 the take here. So, we have to find a place to park. <laughs> and we would need to know uh, how far we are going to beat from uh, uh, the carrier. Because right, we can't just like drive up to the, uh, to the hangar. They'd notice that. In case you were wondering, by the way, the wall that's surrounding this place is about 3 meters up. Or 10 feet. I can handle nice. that. Can you guys jump 10 feet? I could probably climb. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could just stand on Yapitas' shoulders and throw you over. Yeah. And lift me up. He's big. He's tall. And I've got enhanced jumping, so... It's easy enough to find a nice, cozy alleyway to set yourself up. Yeah, and we can... Once we're in the alleyway, we can make sure no one's coming. Then we mm -hmm. can get all geared up. There's one slight Except problem. Except a robot who probably doesn't need to gear up. Unless you... Say something smarter. You're going to have to cross a lit street, and don't forget, there's guardhouses like every few at the front of every hangar. So, crossing a lit road in armor like that is going to draw questions. What does the electricity look like? The shock suit. Yes, but we are Joseph and the fox, the wolf, and the robot, so we are going to raise question anyways. <laughs> if I recall correctly, that's what the shock suit looks like. Basically, it's a whole bunch of fucking. Cool plating with a futuristic technology. That makes sense. Hmm. Slightly bulkier version. Nice. Um, are there other lights connected to anything? I assume there's some sort of system that turns them on during the night and off during the day. Potentially. Is it possible for us to disable one of those and just walk through? And then turn it back on. If you give me a moment. I got a <coughs> long cough. Because I only cough today. Because again, I got a ticklish throat. There's boogers in there. I feel that mine mine's still a little weird for my sickness too. God dang it, traveler! Why do you have an astronaut on your front page? All right, Como, I'm gonna need some. Uh, what's it called again? I think it's called informatics in this one. Yes. Let me take a look. I'm gonna need your hacker man skill. I understand. Engineer? No, that's not it. Informatics, Manscape, everything is zero, but I do have interface. Oh, unless well, you have I some way of handling that. You don't have the... Well, I mean, you have, like, the zero know-how. You can improvise, but you can't transfer your knowledge without something special. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Does anybody have uh, uh, points in informatics? Yes, what were you going to, to try? Uh, you try to turn off the... Uh, yeah, the turn the lights, lights off. Because apparently it is evening. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's a good idea. Can probably do that. <laughs> yeah, just don't yeah you're good at this stuff, aren't you? Yeah. Do you have oh, informatics? Good informatics? Do you have informatics infonet? Infonet? No, I have uh, informatics oh, no. zero and Mindscape. Uh, if only there plenty. was something you could do that smart hackers in movies do that can help with that. I can try to interface uh, with. Uh... Let's see, now there's a smart <laughs> answer. Now, unfortunately, I know IT, and what you're technically trying to figure out is a bridge. But hey. Yes. I mean, that's that's just what this is the pattern is called. It's not even actually the implementation, but. Yes, you can, in fact, try to make a bridge. It's not going to be pretty. I'll tell you that much. And I imagine that Yapitus has, like, some raw materials with him, like a miniature make point that can spit out, like, microchips. It's not fast, Probably. but it works. And so, eventually, your, your fancy rotary Tesla has this the dashboard pulled out as you have plugged in this... It looks crude, but it's more refined than that. You can roll me your informatics mindscape now as you attempt to interface with the internet. It is... It's kind of uh -huh. like if you're in, in VR, if you're in like a, a fancy VR space, and you suddenly walk into like a Doom environment. It's like the quality goes <laughs> down as you cross the bridge mentally, as it were. Wait a minute. We're in a Tesla? Oh no, we're gonna... <laughs> Inf I know, it's gonna, it's gonna ignite and everything, and you're going to die, but it's fine. You have good health no, insurance. Pollum. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that actually gets you like complete access to the system. So, what do you want to do? 
Good you job, have so to put it specifically, what do you have access to? <laughs> yes, I'm about to tell you that. Ah, you have access to a variety of like the day to night scheduler, a variety of lights and electronics. There's of course the climate control inside the building. There's a series of fuel sensors and systems in place. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it appears that some sort of manual override has been activated on the fuel pump, so you can't disable it from here. Uh, okay. You could open the doors if you want. There's like a variety of doors and systems around that you could probably click open and like actually swing open as actuators. Mm -hmm. You also have access to a localized camera camera grid. Oh, interesting. So maybe I could try to tap into that to have a better view of uh, the situation. Mm -hmm. More information can help us. So here's something a bit uh, weird. This informatics thing. Hmm. Whatever they do when they park these things down, it's connected. The the plane is connected. You can talk to the plane. Ooh, more than the fuel. So. <laughs> yeah, if the plane's connected, that means you can try to see like internal cameras. Mm. See what's going on inside of it. Maybe. Well, uh, I can try to do that if uh, the plane is uh, connected. <clears throat> yes. Copy to stuff. <coughs> let's see there are there's basic information like how full the fuel tanks are um, let's see where would cameras be there's probably one in the cockpit there's none in the fresheners because that's illegal there's probably one on the side door on the ramp you know entryways and on the front cargo bay six is, what is eight that's passenger section probably a few in the passenger section too and one in the aft storage basically the whole building is accessible to you. Which one would you like to yeah. take a peek through? I mean, you could probably like, flick through them very fast. Um, interesting locations. There are several individuals located in the passenger section. There are mm -hmm. two people here, like holding watch. You see okay. one person come up the aft ramp, like the one in the back, going, click, 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 goes up mm -hmm. and goes to the cockpit. In the cockpit is someone who looks like he means business. Monkey man, and um, he wears the fanciest stuff around. Let's put it like that. Okay, so uh, I suppose uh, the the hostages may be in the in the cargo bay. I'm going to look. Uh... No, they're in the passenger section. No? You could actually see. Oh, them. the passenger section. Okay, the passenger section. They all appear to and... be restrained, and the two other people in the room, who are armored and armored and everything, okay. are like ready to shoot them. Ah, there is... okay. <laughs> well, not, not like they're holding their guns up. I more mean like they are ready to actually start shooting if they have to. Mm. Their guns are like in their hands. They're wary. Uh... Considering some of them look roughed up, they probably tried to make a move, so yes. Well, I'm going to try to communicate that to everyone with the Mindscape. And, um... I mean, you can just send them a direct feed. They can actually just watch yes. with you. Yes. Well, okay. That. <laughs> uh... And so, do we have access to something else inside the ship? Huh? I type a slash ls on uh, my Mindscape. No, it doesn't work like that. What do you say? <laughs> it somehow does. <laughs> <laughs> Typing slash, L slash ls to, to get uh, all the folders on the... Anyway. Okay, you, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give you a few more bits of information since you're peeking around so much. There is an object inside the cargo hold that appears to be drawing an unusual amount of power. Mm -hmm. um, the guy in the cockpit is currently talking to one of his inferiors. And two, the thing in the, the... the There's something weird inside this structure that um, the system can't seem to identify. Like, there's a, there's a sensory system that's like, oh, signals, you know, can communicate with transponders. And it seems to be picking up some weird signal from inside, and it's like, error, error, error. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to guesstimate that uh, maybe the strange object, uh, the unidentified object uh, in the cargo bay might be some kind of, um, uh, well, the source of, uh, one of the source of the disturbance. Should be the jammer. Yes, jammer. I was looking for the word. Uh, so, yeah, I feel informed, but uh, I'm not quite sure what to do. <laughs> so, 
So our best option, I think, is to do this in stages. You know, try to make this quiet so we, the people inside don't know what's going on too quickly. Okay. So again, I can go and I can mess up the fuel lines. Uh, and then... How long would we have access to this? Because we could turn off the lights inside the ship. Oh, and they might think that's just part of the feedback. Best as you can tell, there are no, there's no ice. There's nothing that's going to try and kick them out. All right. So yeah, once uh, I get the fuel line off, you can also, you can like just turn off the whole ship. Mm -hmm. And that could seem like you know it's just feedback from something going on with the fuel line. And then we can try to get in there. Uh, quickly without them knowing quite what's going on. You know, the whole point here is we got to be moving pretty fast. Okay. Uh, what I could do, maybe, uh, is uh, to... is uh, uh, explain explain my plan to, uh, to, uh, to my... Uh, Helper drone, mm -hmm. so that uh, is uh, the uh, the guy that shuts off the light uh, and gets access to the uh, to the informatics inside the inside the craft, uh, while my mind may be more free to do something else during the action during the action. So I would like to set up a small program. Just tell my just tell my drone to uh, to do uh, the informatic stuff uh, while I'm doing something else. <laughs> Naturally, is that okay? Naturally. Okay. <laughs> By the way, in case I didn't make this clear, the jammer does not appear to interfere with your infonet sys signal. So the locals are entirely unaffected by this. So it's okay. just for people like just us. for Mindscape, yes. Just for the lights. Which is awfully considerate for people taking hostages. Uh, no, they just don't want the. We don't assume the locals would come after them. All right, so you have your little drone on standby to do something for you, provided that your signal doesn't crap out. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh... well, we turn off the street lights. We head on in. We start executing the plan. Now, don't forget to turn the lights back on just in case, you know, once we pass, so they don't get too suspicious. Nice. <coughs> Thanks. Okay. <coughs> All right, so the lights go off. You make your move. You're all armored up, suited up, got your gear ready. Yep. Taking a I few my, uh, final uh, breaths. Color to black. <laughs> just a few deep breaths. You need the focus. All right. How... I mean, I guess the uh, right now, by the way, the, the network that you've hacked is just like the hangar, not like the the street's lights. And even if you had access, how much of the street are you planning to turn off? Not a lot, just enough, enough for yeah. us to run through, and only for a moment. Yeah, you know, once we're past, we turn it back on. Cool. I just, I just, I just want to, like. I mentioned that there's like multiple hangers besides this, right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. You turn the lights off on the street to cross it. The guy in the little guardhouse naturally looks up at this because that's not supposed to happen. Uh, this probably affects it. Well, unless you turn off the hangar. Did you turn off the hangar or just the street? You can see the guard. We can also turn off the guards lights as well. Mm. Probably do some of the hangers so we get through unnoticed. And because they're still made out of meat and bone, their eyes would take a moment to adjust from bright light to uh, darkness. And vice versa. When I say guard that's sitting in like the little guardhouse, I mean like an actual proper like local sits up with his legs, eats a big fat donut kind of guard. Oh, he's not even going to notice us. I've dealt with those guys in China. Where? Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, what do you suggest? Do do I switch off all the lights, just the hangar, just the street? Street and the hangar, then we cross. Yeah, I think the hangar is important too because 
that can actually play into the whole everything's breaking down thing. Oh, okay, well, Zenzo and Gal in the streets. Excellent. As the lights in the streets go out, then suddenly you become confronted with the refracted light of other nearby districts beaming down. I don't know if this thing has a moon, but it's cloudy overhead, so it doesn't matter. That's two suns. How do you make your way across this ten foot high concrete wall? I'm jumping it. <laughs> I'm throwing pollen. I'm Please. letting myself be thrown. <laughs> Please do not hurl teammates without proper care. It is with proper care. Thank you. I'm a machine. I can calculate how to throw them. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to see exactly what what the game considers to be a, a sensible application <laughs> of the strength <laughs> athletic skill, which, funnily enough, is what you use if you try to throw a grenade. In case you no, were wondering. So apparently, I'm supposed to like succeed automatically, unless it's only the. Well, it's it's. I guess you would. Yes, I'm not going to take that from you. But first, I want to see if this is, like, exceptional. Eh, it doesn't even provide me any tips here. Feats of strength. Compl oh, well. What's your athletic strength modifier? Plus one. Like athletic you, specifically is... Is your, is your strength modifier is... My strength is modifier is plus one. My athletics is strength three. Well, in that case, so it's that fine. In that case, it's fine. Throw them to the moon. <laughs> no, it's it's. I just remembered that like you're in high, you're in higher gravity than normal, so it's actually a bit of a difficult thing for you to pull off. But you do That's in true, fact yeah. give them the little kip up. Whoop. Yes. Um, how athletic are you? Paul, uh, is your character Paulum? Uh, in is he, is he... I have one, <laughs> and everywhere else uh, zero. Uh, I'm, I mostly mean like do you kind of scramble up the wall or do you manage to hip up over? Because getting I've tossed probably... up and having to clamber a wall isn't, isn't the easiest thing if you're not trained. Now, is this no, wall like no. covered with barbed wire, or is it just a wall? Because if it's, it's just, just a wall, I can just I can just carefully plop them on top of the wall, and so they can kind of it's fine, it's fine. shimmy down on the other side. <laughs> he has athletic dexterity, then he has athletic strength. He probably has like basic CrossFit, so he knows how to do a little bit of the basic pulling yourself up at the end. The two of you manage to clamber onto the other side. Now, I would draw you a little little map. How about I draw you a little like overview map? That'll help. That's okay. Fair enough. Well, that's oh, wow. two of us, and there is three of us. Just the some of us. I mean, if all else fails, I can just walk through a wall. <laughs> okay, so we have that is the opposite of snow. <laughs> basically the compound. The we have oh wait no I don't want to select I want to draw. No I don't want to select I want to draw. We got the hangar like over hereish, and then we got but... the the fuel tank like the big the big storage whatever what's it's over here. That I'm not made out of liquid. Metal. Also, I just do this. We have the, 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 the tanks over here. We have like some storage over here. We have the gate over here. You're approximately behind here. The lights are off. Um, on your little camera, you can see the, the guards like withdrawn to the structure to help set up the bottleneck and the aft. I, I can't see anything. Sorry. Oh, yeah, it's because for some reason the default is not seeing anything. Give me two secundo. Here you go. Ooh. That's better. So where are we? You're in the bottom right of the, okay. of the big box. Look at that goat just running up the bricks. As I mentioned on the camera, the guards are like retreating inward. They're taking the bottleneck of the, 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 the aft entrance. Two hearts. Okay. Um, by the way, since you're a little closer now, you can definitely feel the the jamming, giving you like a mild headache. It's nothing to, that I'll actually interfere with your ability to function right now, but it's starting to get you. Yeah, well, hopefully I can find that over. thing and break it. Alright, well the lights are off. You're waiting. They are making their set of moves. They're getting concerned about the situation, or at the very least on alert. Okay, I'm going to try to stealth myself into the nearest, into the hangar that, you know, the microfusion generators in. You know, the one they're drawing power from. You mean the hangar or like the bit, the thing itself? Because the well, plane the has its own. Yeah, because the the, the 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 rotary has its own little generator. That's how it works. Yeah, but the one that they're feeling off of. You slide on over to the hangar and see the last few guards slip into the structure with your little night visions. Your friends are in back, kind of wiggling. What are you doing as this lady slips in through the side door? Be on the lookout for the guards. If anybody finds us, I'm going to use the stun rifle on them. They're unlikely to find you since they've retreated into the to the vehicle. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to keep quiet for now. 
As you enter into the structure, Zelda, you see sufficient space to hold you know, quite some large... Like, that big thing outside would probably be like the biggest thing that fits in here, reasonably. In here are pretty much everything you expect. There's a little workspace, there's a, an overhead where you can see like, the whole thing from above, cranes, small construction equipment if you need it, and indeed there's a fuel hose that goes... There's two hoses that connect to the outside fuel tank. One goes inward and the other one goes whoop, over to the side to the outside front door. The, um, where it enters, there's like a little panel that helps probably regulate fuel or tell you what's, do, what's doing. Okay. So... The weird thingy that was picked up is in the ship, right? The, the thing one. that the sensors couldn't identify? Yes. To be, spe okay, to be specific, there is something drawing power within the ship. Inside the cargo bay specifically, and there's like a large big box there. And two, there appears to be something that is causing the sensors to go a little nutty. And if you're still monitoring it, are you? Yes, sure. In that case, you would pick up that when at certain point it starts to pick up like another signal. Like it gives another layer of error messages every few seconds. Oh, that's weird. That's probably poor. Oh, uh, the... the... Started uh, uh, another signal when we entered the, the vicinity. When we got closer. Good to know. Thanks. So well. maybe it's kind of counts how many uh, Mindscaper uh, it's jamming in some sort of uh, way. My goodness. I wish this game had Benny's because it'd give you one. At what? <laughs> Bunnies, you know, inspiration, luck points, action points. Because he just thing. figures something <laughs> out. Because honestly, the amount of times my players figure something out and make me go, "Oh my goodness," is worth mentioning. I want to encourage okay, that. Okay, guys, if uh, Zyla, if it's the mines, what you probably okay, you can respond to that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if he's telling us something important, I'd be responding. Well, guys, when we go in, we might want to turn off our mindscapes then. Don't forget that you lose all your Halo skills when that happens. Oh. What even are my Halo skills? There are the skill numbers in between the brackets. Yeah. Oh. So I lose one one point. Actually, if I recall correctly, it actually becomes a negative modifier. Yes. I. It doesn't explain if it means that your Halo skill will set to zero and then you receive the penalty, or if you just lose the skill. But we'll go with just lose the skill for now. Alright. Point is... What's everyone doing? Okay, so I'm going to hit the thing. And then... Whatever thing you just hit, you sure hit it. Yeah, I'm going to turn <laughs> off the uh, the fuel line. That's a whole different Hopefully action, Silo. But I get what you mean. You head on over to the fuel panel and give it a look over. It is... It's about what you'd expect for this tech level. It's a big glass panel. And on this, like, oh, sh system diagnosis information. It's mentioning how much hydrogen it's pumping in there. Um... It also probably gives like some error reports because the lights going off causes weird electric fluctuations and fuel is a very sensitive thing, so it's like got a little error box that's like oopsies. Indeed, as was mentioned, there's this big box in a section. There's like this uh, this black and yellow striped outline of like danger, danger, and a section at the bottom is like the manual override's been activated, and it says that you shouldn't do that because if there's a fuel problem, it can't automatically shut off, blah blah. Is there an emergency shutoff button? There's like a whole bunch of buttons, and they're all probably obviously labeled. Now, of course you have a language soft, so you can actually understand the shit, but I would like to point out that if you do turn your Mindscape implant off, you also lose your translation software. But for now, you can find the button. It's outside. Como, you're keeping watch. Give me a recon yes. roll. Absolutely. Just to be sure, we can no longer... Uh... Telepathically communicate. Well, we haven't turned them off yet. Oh, well, your mindscape implants that's... are getting are getting foggy though. There's like you need to send like the message multiple times. It actually takes like seconds for the message to get through at this point. Hmm. Oh, just a all experience. Okay. Yes. But maybe they already okay. know that we are here. <laughs> Como. I mean, I'd prefer not to turn mine off. Como. But... Two people have just exited the craft and are heading towards the hangar. <laughs> okay, I'll report that to police. By the way, I assume so, my drone is still up patrolling. Presumably, yes. It's okay. starting to yeah. suffer somewhat under the fact that both of your connections are now so hazy. 
That's fair enough. I'm gonna have it like move away for a moment. I mean, it, it it has a it has a sentience. It can land itself if it has to. If the connection is broken, so don't worry about that. Okay. Well, I'll just tell it to sit somewhere like next to our car or whatever. Yeah, it's got a U in it. <laughs> it's, there's, there's more of you. It sits on your car. If it sits, it fits. I mean, I just, I mean, I'll paint it like a bird or something. Okay. Well, you you <coughs> sends out the communication, I presume. Yes. And I'm going to prepare to uh, engage them and knock them out if I have to. Does that mean getting closer? Because from where you are right now, it would take you uh, like a bit to get to them. I understand. That would probably involve getting closer, yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm going to follow uh, Como and uh, assist him. Como, are you any good with stealth, or are you going to keep this the safe distance? Uh, my stealth is four. Sure! Still don't understand how. <laughs> I mean, I imagine it's because his servos are very silent, and he oils up every day. Well, I mean, the new the newer Deus Ex games have literally an ability that drains power, but that lets you be silent. Because, of course, it Even takes power to be silent. Yes, it's a 12. I didn't ask you to roll, and two, you should have included oh. dexterity, and three. Mm. I was just asking... I was yeah, just asking, you slip open. up to the to the edge of the structure, and you hear the door, like, open up, and those fine fellows are making their way in. If it w if the lights were on, you're pretty sure they could see you from the cockpit at this point. That makes sense. Maybe. Um, these gentlemen are, like, up at the door, and they're about to open it up. I'll Zyla, I'll have you turned moment. off the fuel yet? Yeah, I'm, I slammed my hand on that button and started moving for a shadow I spot. don't know why I'm being so dramatic. These are sensitive electronics. <laughs> You hear the fuel like choke up, and then there's this gurgle, gurgle, like, as it sucks back in the the remaining gas to clear the lines. And as you would imagine, that noise causes the people at the door who are standing near the tube to go. That's unusual. The lights go out. They are like they go from having their guns like casually at their stomach to like up aiming. They're ready. The moment they go inside, I'm going to go off to them and I'm going to knock them out. They, they, fl before the door they, they flank the door. They do like a SWAT entry. Mm -hmm. Then they like probably mentally count down. And then one of them turns and goes, boom, Zala, where are you when this happens? Uh, as soon as I hit that, I was going to be aiming to go up like away the from the door because I knew they'd be coming. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. So my original goal was going up like uh, onto the catwalks. How good can you jump, by the way? Uh, really good. <laughs> uh, I can double all jumps. Okay, cool. In that case, you can certainly make your way up to, like, the first layer of catwalks. Before they figure anything out, because they took a moment to re delay their actions. You hear the door slam open. The metal sound echoes through the lightless hall. You see, th like, several dots of this... <coughs> what do they call the <coughs> Night vision. <coughs> of night vision goggles. Sweep side to, to side. Sound. With your own vision, you can even see their guns like aim, infrared sensors zip, aiming at the distance. They stick together and they cover each other's backs as they sort of move up to the control panel to figure out what's up with this thing. Come on, what are you doing as, the, as they make their move? What is everyone else? Uh, what is everyone I'm doing? doing? I'm going to try to slink in the door before it closes behind them so it doesn't make a noise. So you don't have to open it yourself. You're you super good at this. Yeah, they, they kick the door in, they walk in, and as the door closes, I'm going to sling behind them so the door doesn't, like, click or whatever. Come on, you have to roll me a stealth check for this one, for realsies. Okay. Because these guys yeah. are, like, doing the back-to-back -back move. They will see you unless you slink in like a sneaky boy. I know. <sighs> and six. You know what? You can you can roll that with a boon, because I did give that. I was going to give you a penny for being a good boy. Okay, fair enough. So <laughs> that would be... Roll again, six, and it replaces right? one of your ones. Okay, fair enough. Just two d six, and then also plus one from my. Um, so uh, also is your plus four. Como the way that it works, with a boon is that you roll three d six, keep the highest two. Okay, so roll. So roll three d six. Thank you. A H. No. Four total or. No, just just roll one We're... more d six. No, don't don't roll anything. <laughs> okay. We're taking the six from your second roll. Okay. Impressive, you roll three ones in a row though. Kudos on that. Mazel tov. Um, you slink inside and swoop behind a set of barrels that is near up to the door. 
they don't see you as they begin their little patrol, though eventually when they realize there's no one in the room but them, they turn on their flashlights to get... You can't imagine that the night vision goggles are that clear, and they make their way towards the control panel. It depends it on the generation. I know. Well, since I know you're down there, because... Yes, you can probably see me, too. Also, my bow scope has an... Uh... Friend and foe identifier. I'm going to give you a little bit more information. When they go up to the panel, one of them has to take his night vision goggles off before he can engage with the control panel. So, since we still do have our Mindscape on, I'm going to send, like, it's going to be like a video game thing. I'm going to ping that I'm <laughs> aiming at uh, one of them multiple times. Oh, you have to do it multiple times because it takes a moment to get through the goddamn jamming signal. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like I'm just sitting there hitting the Z key to ping it over and over damn, again damn, until Komo nods. <laughs> Can you imagine these dinosaurs? It's like, why there's a red thing above your head, huh? And then Combo gets like one ping and then like three at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bollum is outside in the cold. Yes, I can't be that stealthy. <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh... Well, and pretend to be a cute puppy. If somebody comes along, just... Make, make puppy eyes. Mean, the funny part is, you could probably get away with that. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> Pullum is just like sitting there. It's like, wait, is that a dog? It Pullum like enunciates bark. Borf. Bork. Borf. Bork. <laughs> it's exactly. It's like that. That doesn't sound like any dog I've ever heard. Bruf. Bjork. Bruf. Bjork. Yeah, he just keeps Bjork. changing the sounds. <laughs> Every possible language. Auga. Oh, that that's right. <laughs> All right, Zylan Como. You're, you're in the hot seats. You've pinged your targets. Yes. So I have an arrow. I'm going to yes. use one of the charges from my suit's batteries to add stun to it. Oh my goodness. Okay, well... Here go, pull up. Here's an audio aid for you. I actually have to pull up one of those sheets because they have, like, combat information on them. All right. Well, once you start shooting, we, we start doing the, the, the fun stuff. Yes. Cool. So on your, your, your things, by the way, there's a tab called Ref. So the combat tip, it's our... Yes. We're not going to roll initiative, because you guys go first, because you guys are starting the fight. Yeah, we're ambushers, technically. <laughs> yes. We get plus six on first round. Plus six on first round. Initiative. They get, they get minus six. Unfortunately, despite the fact the numbers are so low, they could easily do, like, get multiple rounds per round. <sighs> they don't. Anyway... Do either one of you have leadership? Or would like to make a, a plus eight leadership roll? Because that might help you. Let me check. Because you can, when a fight starts, one of you, one person can go like, I'm the leader. And if they make a roll I against... I do not have leadership. They can make a roll of leadership, and I think intelligence or education, whatever, versus eight. And if they their effect are boon dice, they can use during the fight. If they fail, go below, it's the opposite. I do not have leadership specifically, but I could try rolling as my... Oh, well, no, my intent education um, out of ours is zero, so it's just going to be a 2d6. Uh, that's a risky thing. Yes, but yeah. leadership, if, if you are, when you have no score, it's minus three, I think. Untrained. Except for I have yes. jack of all Well, trades. it'd be uh, minus one if you have two in jack of all trades like I do. So, you two can decide which one of you goes first, and what you do with your turn, as you decide to, whenever you decide to actually spring the trap. All right. So I'm going to use my arrow, which is electrically charged, mm -hmm. and I'm going to trouble. fire it at the guy I pinged, mm -hmm. and I get plus one because I'm aiming. Yes. Well, um, a quick thing about aiming. If you have actually been aiming for a while, you can sack aim up to six. Oh, yeah, I've been you, watching this guy since uh, which, they got in. And let, let me give you some further context. Aiming is a minor action. You get one significant action, which is whatever you did to actually do something, and the minor actions are moving, standing pose, items. You can turn a significant action into two It's a minor action. So you can aim three times per turn if you want to. Like, it takes two turns to get a plus six, and at that point, it's... It's all right. Yeah, I've been aiming at this guy since he got in. All right. Well, Zala, make, make it count. By the way, you get a minus two. This guy has a field. The moment okay, I see so Zyla... I get a total of plus four, then. The moment I see them lose the arrow, I will shoot mine. By the way, when you're using a range attack, that is 2d6 plus your skill plus your dex dice modifier versus eight. Nothing changes this number other than range and other circumstances. 
So it's 2d6 plus my what? 2d6 plus your skill with whatever weapon you're using. It's probably range combat archaic. Plus your dex modifier. Plus your range, plus your aim bonus, which is plus 4, because plus 6 minus the four, field. It's 5. And archaic I had over here under range. Because I got, I think I got plus 3. Oh, there it is. Gun combat, technically, his bow is under for some reason. Oh, yeah, sorry. Because it's arranged. Yeah, because people use guns. Pew, pew. That is an effect of three. Roll me whatever the damage is for your weapon. Plus three. Okay, that's... It has a minus. What? Huh? Like the damage on it is. Yeah, there are a lot of weapons. Minus that work. three yeah. plus strength. Yeah, there's a lot of weapons that work like that. Revolvers too. <clears throat> Gosh, don't you also have Electra? Oh, what's it? Also, I didn't add the the plus three you said. And yeah, I added, and uh, so I have 1d6 on there. And 5 stun damage. For total? Uh, <clears throat> 14. <coughs> so, what you imagine must might have hurt like hell on anyone else. Um, he flinches. There's definitely like this but he's still standing. And I mean, to be fair, he did just shoot a guy with an arrow. On, like, a pretty crappy roll that. But, he's standing, he's ready. Como. Yes. You're ambushing the guy. Yep. <sighs> so, that would be 2d6, plus my skill. Let me pull Did up your mind jammer sheet, and I'll just help you with this. Yep. What weapon are you using, Como? On rifle. That's energy, so take your dex, which is plus one, plus your... Plus six for energy weapons, because for some reason you're very good with those. Yes. If you were aiming, aka you were setting up a shot, Yes. you can add plus six. Okay. Is that all for the attack? Okay. Thanks, dude. Whoop. 23. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> um, so that's an effect of 15. So roll me the damage for your uh, stun rifle, was it? That's 5d? 5d. So it's 5d6? 5d6 plus 16, yes. And your thing is armor piercing 5. Yes. Okay, this guy's gonna like, be stunned. Oh, Zyla, excuse me. He actually took more damage because you forgot to tell me your weapon is AP4. <laughs> oh, yeah. His armor that's piercing. important. Also, I technically did one more damage. Technically did five more damage. It wasn't four, it was nine. In which case, he's like... <laughs> that actually hurt him. Okay, Como, despite the How fact that... How does the stun work? Thank you for asking. Allow me to explain to you what stun does. I'm going to switch to a vo tone of voice that makes it sound like I'm professional. I like this stupid thing because finding the goddamn weapon traits is always a pain because you have to go to combat for some reason! Oh hey, I rolled three ones. Yeah, and you still did a fuckload. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's... It's kind of like, hey, it's a fighting man. That's what he does. <laughs> but he's not. It's the one thing I, I'm good at doing. By the way, Como, auto. Yes. Oh, how does this work again? A weapon can make the following. You can make single, normal combat rules. Burst, add the auto score to damage, or full auto. Make a number of attacks equal to the auto score. It can be made against separate targets as long as they're within six meters of each other. Are they within six meters of each other? Because Well, they were going back to back, so yes. Okay, well, can I... Target the second one with the rest of it, if the first one gets knocked out. I don't know if this gives any penalties, but it might for multiple actions. How does this work again with multiple action penalties? Or am I just imagining things? I don't think I'd imagine... I'm imagining things here, so... Probably fine. Oh yeah, that'll probably got like a plus one because of the whole short range. I was like, damn, ugh. That guy took a heavy. Alright. Alright. Let's take a la 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 Oh, wait. Um... How big would this place be? 
How big is an if average? If it's a fuel hangar, that's probably 100 by 25 or something. Meters? Or okay, well, in that case, yeah, you're within range and coming. I'm thinking about, like, the... Qu because close range is a quarter, and you get a plus one on that. But, but... God damn the damage. Stun. These weapons are designed to deal non-lethal damage, incapacitating a level target rather than killing them. The damage is only deducted from end, taking into account any armor. If the end is reduced to zero, the target will be incapacitated and unable to perform any actions for a number of rounds um, by which the damage exceeds its end. Basically, they're... Brrr. Damage received from stun weapon is completely healed in one hour. I think that after Zyla shot him with the arrow... I mean, like, I have his hit points written down as just, like, hit point, hit points, but I think that takes him out, because he does not have, like, a bajillion endurance. So he just goes, and he just falls to the ground. He's alive, but, uh, woo! Yeah, for a bit. He's, he's partially electrocuted and partially stunned. God damn it, really? With... All right. The remaining guy, of course, like, takes a brief moment, but he's training for this... He dives behind... They've been using this place as a storage depot, basically. He dives behind a big big box, which mostly just provides him with armor. doesn't change the numbers or anything. And he aims this big gun that he has right up at Xyla, up in the... Because, you know, the arrow draws a lot more attention to itself. Okay, so... Oh, it's an once arrow this this oh. is an automatic weapon. Can I try to hit him as well? Yes, you can make another attack roll, I guess. Okay, so it would be the same? Mm -hmm. Except minus the six for, for aiming. I wasn't aiming at him. Um, so that's just going to be 2d6 plus 6 plus 1. That's 15. Nice. And then 5d6 plus 1. Plus the effect, which is whatever you have over 8. <coughs> oh, over 8. So that's 15 minus 8. That's going to be 7. So 5d6 plus 7. God damn. Okay, so I guess Como just with this full auto rain of like stun bolts just takes him out I mean to be fair again that's what he does <laughs> apparently I, that's that's the only thing I'm good at alright alright yeah but it's what do you contribute to this team <laughs> <laughs> I, I should good no I, I deplete my shotgun shots by unnecessarily gloating god there's oh. a video about that where the guy just keeps doing <laughs> There's a video of a guy who ejects the shell and catches it and loads it back in. Okay, so what happens is what happens is because you knock these two guys out before they could actually do anything. Yes. Um, I guess Pollen would probably pick up on the people inside the ship being like concerned, and then there's this clickety clack, and now he has to start contending with countermeasures as someone decides to turn the firewall up or causes some sort of like net purge, as it were. He's restarting the router. So that's a good time, I suppose, to tell everyone to uh, shut off the landscape. Or you can try to counter hack him. Why is it so fucking funny? That guy gets hit with a blue ring and he's just like, mm, I'm going to take a nap. Sleepy mode. <laughs> All right, you were apparently sent a message that <coughs> the Netscape is a liability or something. Uh, yes. Do you do any with well, this information? What? Uh, I'm talking to your friends here. Oh. Well, well I mean, I'm off. turning mine off because that was my plan to start with. Yep. It's really, really weird to turn that off. Hey, not for me. I'm used to it. I keep forgetting this stupid thing. That doesn't change the fact that it's still like a significant part of how your brain works most of the time. This thing ain't like, this. this isn't like a phone that sits in your brain. This is like a whole part of your personality for the if you if you're in it, even a little bit, it adds this glaze to the world. And when it goes away, everything's so sharp and crisp, and it's just weird static on everything. I just found a gif of what Poland's been doing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you not go act. Uh, Poland has no pants and is wearing a, 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 a trench coat. coat. The employees can't stop it. Well, Pollum. They're. Tsh it seems like they're starting the takeoff sequence. The engines are revving up, and they're starting to purge you. Uh, uh, 
but you have to use your voice. Yes, but I'm I'm going to think about that. Uh, you do not want me to kill. Ah. Uh, so they are closing the doors uh, to the uh, they aircraft. Are they are closing the aft, which is uh, this one. The they are closing that cargo door. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a few others. There are the side doors and the top and the bottom, and then there's the side cargo door and the front one. Oh, if they're going to be yeah. taking off, uh, I'd rather rush to the car and pick up my buddies up. Who's the car? Excuse me? They're starting the takeoff sequence. They're mm -hmm. not taking off yet. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, can I guess how many time, uh, how much time do, do we have because, before they... Uh... Try to off. hack them harder and turn it off. Well, I can't hack them without my mindscape. <laughs> well, I mean, you're still to... if they're starting stuff. They're going to hack me. No, uh, I guess I have to, 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 to shout to you. Uh... I can't imagine it's safe to take off while the fuel line's still connected. It can't be. They might be you usually you think right they have like some uh, emergency thing to prevent that. Well, if only. If only I could go and check the fuel line connection. Well, see you if can. maybe there's an emergency shutdown for the connected ships. Because that makes sense in a higher tech setting than the real world. Unfortunately, unless you have any particular knowledge of like plane operations, say something like mechanic or half flown something that flies before. You're a little on the, you're a little at a loss as to how to do this, but if you have those skills, you might be able to think about it. I do have piloting. No no that's pilot for start ships, not for like small little baby planetary craft. Small that's, craft? That's flyer. Small craft uh, are technically I guess that would be close enough, but you'll have to roll me on that one. What do I need to roll? Well small craft plus education. Well, I guess intellect, because it's more like improvisational than book learning. Would mechanic help? If you have yeah. mechanic, you can automatically know this. Oh, yes, I do. I have mechanic. mechanic too. So I should automatically know this, but I'm afraid that's... Well, you're not the one that's there. Uh, it's, it's the two of us. <laughs> well, you start looking at the panel, and then Como is like, hey, did, 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 did you know that most most safety instructions are like, don't let the fuel line disconnect while it's actively pumping? Beep. So if I turn the fuel back on, I imagine the Yabbas would just do that, just to like to make the point itself. But that... and he does it properly. He like just gently pushes the button. God damn it, Yabbas! You're look, supposed to break the screen. Look, without 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 the Mindscape connection, I'm just a protocol droid. So you know. Well, yeah, but this still be like built-in stuff. To your, you. your your yeah. your your mechanic skills not connected to your halo, so that part works. I know. Fine. I'm just saying that all my gun stuff falls off, but all the mechanic stuff and admin stuff. <laughs> my gun arm fell off. <laughs> Well, I mean, I plan on killing the Mindscape Jammer next, so... That's fine. That's good. So, as you do this, um, it's still, like, revving up, engines are starting up. Um, Pollen, what are you doing as they are trying to purge you from the system? Are you going to resist or make some sort of effort, or are you turning off your Mindscape implant and just jacking out? Because you yes, can yes, your Mindscape and stay connected. Uh, that is the bridge you're using, yes. Well, um... Uh... Well, I, I can turn off the my mindscape and still be connected to the, uh, to the infonet? No. no Unfortunately, do you that. don't have any infonet connected devices. Other yes, than the yes. Basic you built into the car. Hmm. Um, oh, oh, honestly, I don't know if I'm able to, to resist a, a jammer like that. Uh, well, uh, as a player, I don't know if uh, I have the sufficient skills to... Uh, to uh, try to counteract the jammer, but uh, my I don't know what my, my, my character would think. <laughs> I don't know if I'm clear. I mean, your character, if you want character knowledge, I can give you that. Your character probably has like a few ideas how to handle this. One, you could just try to hold fast and keep them off and stay in there. If you consider a priority to maintain connection in spite of everything. You could also do a salt the earth thing where you just throw garbage in. On the way out, you just throw so much garbage in, mm -hmm. in hopes of just making the system go on itself. It's up to you. 
okay, for disconnecting. DDoS, well, DDoS. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, uh, yes, uh, DDoS things uh, do, do, does, uh, sounds uh, pretty good, actually. Roll me. Education mind burn. As you formulate a fantastic plan. Mind burn? Yes, mind Where burn. Should be under gun combat. Gun combat. Okay, I've got one. It's actually and difficult. That's neat. Education, you say? Yes. Because you're basically quickly formulating effectively a self replicating bug that eats up all the memory on that thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why is there a transparent die here? What are you doing here? I don't know. I don't, oh, I don't like it. The die the dice that I see are like all wibbly wobbly. Two ones. Wow. Yes. Wow, Como. Paulum is Four. learning it from you. <laughs> Wait, didn't Paulum get a. We're all didn't say you were going to give him a Benny? Sure. So he can roll, roll me one more d6 and we'll place one of the ones with that. And he's going to roll another one because that's what Como did. I swear. Thank God. <laughs> okay, so that makes three higher. That's well, a nine. All right. Well, it's pretty easy to throw a lot of garbage into someone's systems and watch it fry. Um, your connection is severed, so I don't know what's going on, but mm -hmm. there sure is something going on there. You hope. Sila and Como, yeah. you've you've turned this on, but they're still not taking off because again, you can't just take off a helicopter. It takes a while. The cold start procedure is like ten minutes at least. Yeah. So we have a few minutes possible. left. So uh, I would suggest we, uh, Zell and I, go and try to get rid of the jammer now. Yeah, if the jammer's in the cargo bed, that means it's near the back. Mm -hmm. And There's all I have to do is just overload it. Yeah. Which is which is shooting it with your bow with an electricity. I can bow. use my brain. You can hit it with your head and then use overload on yourself. What? I can do it from a distance. I'm, I'm electro psychokinetic. Or they can just do give you it need a your mind hug. Do you need your mindscape connection no, for this? No, th this is natural to me. <gasps> no, this actually Whoa. messes up my mindscape. This is funny. Okay, fair enough. This is Let's actually go. why my uh, character doesn't use the mindscape uh, all the time, is because my uh, psychokinesis actually messes with it. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So, no, this is actually just a thing I can do. That's badass. Okay, let's go. So I'm going to... First, I'm going to look out there and try to make sure the lights are still off. The lights will slowly turn off as the, the connection and all severs and everything. So there's probably like a few lights that begin to flicker. Um, Can you roll me a luck check? Just 2d6. Oh, this is going to be bad. It's going to be great. Both of us, though? Or Gisela? Man, you're getting out the bad rules, are we? You gotta Just because you're getting out the bad ones doesn't mean you got to wait too long on it. You notice that the whatever whatever has been going on with that ship after Pollum got his little little fingers on it, some of the doors like open, but not well, enough that you can actually get in through another way. The back cargo door stays jammed open though. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go in there. Okay. So you run on over to the back of the ship. You will oh, look up. Yes. You probably see like a line of four dudes who almost immediately get opening fire. During which I presume oh. you slide in a cover or something. Yep. Yes. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, but what do you do as this happens? As you see Sila pull off this crazy stunt. Well, I'm going to create a commotion so they view me as the bigger target. So I'm just going to open that them uh, with a stunner rifle. But I'm not really aiming at anything, just to okay, make them pop their heads down. Okay. Second. We're just in direct combat now. This is going to be fun. <laughs> All yeah. right. All right. I don't right. have my implant, so it's just going to be going over their heads so they, you know, hunker down. Well, unfortunately, sure. if you're just going to stand there and take shots, cool. No, I'm not going to stand there. I'm going to be in cover as well. Whatever cover I can find. Okay. Cool. As mentioned, this is a bit of a rough industrial terrain, so there's probably a few hmm. basic boxes you can hide your little butt behind. Probably containers or something, yes. As mentioned, the cover around here works a little bit differently. It provides you armor bonuses instead of anything else. And the armor the thing you're behind is like a sturdy metal box. Until it gets shredded to pieces by all these sonic weapons, it'll probably provide you about 10 points of extra armor. For now, it'll probably keep you safe from those guns, but they'll start tearing through, like, big, like, pressure blasts keep bashing into it. 
as they open fire from their own defensive position. They're behind, like, actual proper knee cover they set up. Yes. So what's the plan, kids? I'm waiting for Zella to turn off the uh, jammer, then I'm plugging back in, then I'm knocking them so, out. So, yeah, can I sense the jammer or see it? Do you have a skill for your electrokinesis? I do, I have electrosci. Cool. You can roll me that. Uh, where the hell is it? It's on your main page, probably, because it's nowhere else. Uh, for bioelectric s- under melee. Um, I roll that in your electrosci points. Okay, yes. so... Don't forget to reduce your current when you spend those points using your electric powers. Yep, I used one point from my suit. And your modifier should have gone down to plus one. <gasps> Pull him. I have a great idea. Oh, wait, no. Did you unplug yourself already? Yeah, uh, no, I'm not uh, unplugged. Okay, so... I, the... I, I don't see much, but uh, I'm not. I mean, he got kicked out of the system because it was more focused on... So... Alright, that's enough. I mean, even with the fact that you didn't include the fact that your modifier should have gone down because you spent one point. Well, my battery has three points. Oh, well, oh, yeah. The backup battery. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got an external battery I'm using first. Bap! Let's move on. There's a large box inside the center. Around here-ish. It's a pretty big box. It's inside there. <coughs> you can feel it. It's, it's like a big storm but only exist in like a very specific frequency. Like imagine if you see a massive whirlwind, and if you close one eye, it vanishes. But with the other eye, you can see it very clearly. That's like a scotoma. Yeah, because it's only on a few frequencies. So only specific frequencies, so when you detect electricity, you have to hone into that frequency to even see what it's doing. How many points do I have to spend to make it explode? I'll make it a lot. Um, but I'm going to have to look up like... The actual psionic rules, because that'll give me a good idea as to how much it will take to... Let's see, I think it's... What is one is it again? Awareness? No. Where is it? I just need I just need a ballpark number here, game. I just need a ballpark number. So that I can play ball! Here we go. Pyrokinesis. That's three, but that's just setting someone on fire. Oh, here we go. Flight. To fly is five. So I think that blowing up something that's already quite heavily on fire... Ooh, assault. Vi- oh, that's that's poking someone's brain. I'd say four points is enough. Okay, so I'll use the other two that are in my battery. But this is just to destroy the device itself. If you want, like, an explosion that hits the whole room... Well, I mean, that would probably hurt our hostages, right? <laughs> They're above the, the device, yes. yes? Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Come on, I almost tricked you there. there I would rather not that. explode them. <laughs> Why is this here? For some reason... I'll See, I'm go. going to use the two other points in my battery, and then I'll use two from my pool. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. You reach out to the device, and then there, for everyone else, there's probably this moment of clarity. It's like the headache subsides, and your Mindscape implant probably automatically starts back up again, because I presume it would have like an auto-restart feature when it detects no further interference of note. Yes. Because, you know, it, it can understand that kind of stuff. And you're, you're SCI agents, you shouldn't have to worry about rebooting your goddamn computer. Uh, the people up on the flight deck come are still like braining down sonic charges. They are mm-hmm. briefly distracted, like they turn their backs as they try to look behind themselves and wonder what's going on. During this moment of brief ceasefire, you yes. still hear like a loud <laughs> coming from upstairs. I assume the jammer was for the big guy in no small part, rather than against us. So he's probably awakened. Man, he's gonna be mad. We're dead. So, Who's going to awaken? Yeah, I guess that, that that could have been the sound of his fucking head exploding. So uh, while these guys are distracted, I'm gonna try to zippy zap him using my zappy gun. All right, well, there's four of them. What's your auto? Uh, auto is three. Cool. I can take at least three of them, and then the fourth one remains. All right, roll me the goods, boy. Okay. And then so Zyla can just... give me a go. Yep. Uh, so it's going to be 2d6 plus 6 plus 1, because I'm not necessarily specifically aiming at them, I suppose. So there's going to be three of those. There's the first one. It's 14. So it's going to be doing 5d6 plus 6. Damage. Okay, then one of them goes down. There's the attack on the second one, 13. There's gonna be 5 to 6 plus 5. 
Another goes down. <laughs> okay, here's a third attack, which is 12. Why are they all decreasing by one? So plus four. Which damage goes down. Okay. okay, one of them stays stand. Two of them are still standing by the end yeah. of this. Well, then it's my round. Also, your weapon is starting to like feel the the overheat burn of firing so often. It's 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 a stun weapon. It's not really meant to like barrage people this much. Yeah, it's probably steaming. Plus, oh wait, I forget. Your like weapon has like your weapon has armor piercing. So yes, there's three down. There's one standing. Mm -hmm. You see, he, he when he turns back, you can almost tell like he's reaching for his head and like trying to make sure that his headset gets this message through. That's uh, effect of four on the hit. Okay. And I do have the armor piercing. Mm hmm. It's important. Just these people are armored. Um, oh, yeah. I need to remember that technically all those have, like, minus, but that gets counterbalanced by the armor piercing, I guess. Because they have fields, and fields make it harder to shoot people because it creates a. They said plus, uh, how much? Four is the effect of your shot because that's how much you have over eight. The eight to successfully hit, and then everything else goes to damage. Yup. Just kind of neat. Do I add from uh, my bioelectric if I use my electricity? If you look under your weapons, you'll see that your bioelectricity is an extra die for how many CSI points you spent. And I spent one. Don't forget, you can also take a minor action to take the aim action even before you make your shot. Okay, cool. So that makes ten damage. Um, he probably like feels the shockwaves through his body sufficiently so that he still tries to counter fire though. But first. He, like, yells over, like, whatever he yells. He... It takes a moment because your language shelf's still syncing up, so you only get, like, the tail end. Um, it's entirely plausible that you're dealing with a hostage getting uh, gunned down at this point. Mm -hmm. That might have been what you heard a moment ago. But it might be. He's just phoning in his boss. Hello, boss. I fucked up. He takes aim. Probably a Como, the guy who's doing the most damage around here. Yes. Why'd you make yourself such a big target? That's five. On purpose. Because I can take it. Oh, wait, I think this guy has auto. Does he have auto? He does have auto, so he can actually aim for both of you. Um, okay, that's a one on Tyler. Wait, if we're from different directions, we're not close to each other. I thought you were hiding behind the same cover because you were trying to get up the ramp. I thought we were, like, on different boxes on either side of them. Okay. Well, then only for Como. That's 13... Plus four. Makes for 17. Como, what's your armor rating? Uh, well, I have that pressure suit that gives me nine, and I have a haze field that gives me extra two. Okay. Well, your box is starting to whittle down as he barrages it with an onslaught of sonic charges, but you're fine! Your turn again. Okay. Can I go first? I got it. I got it. Yeah, go I'll ahead. Try. Finish him up. Okay, so the guns these guys are using are electronic. I want to go into my uh, brain and see if I can feel a gun upstairs and break it. I feel like Como can handle this guy. Give me a electro okay. This one's a bit easier because they're actually using them. <laughs> and it's also not a jammer that causes interference. You think your, your vision's a bit closer. So roll me your electro Buy Buy your bio electric. Oh, man. Well, I'm going to have to look up some numbers because I don't think it's that hard to do. Oh, god dang it. Give me, give me, give me this. Let's see. How hard is it to life detect? It's considered e Oh, that's considered easy? Really? Wow. What's considered difficult, then? Or average? Read surface thoughts. Okay, cool. Well, I guess that makes sense, since you use points. Like, it becomes harder to do over time. All right. You scan. You detect upstairs two guns and one guy with a very big hammer. With one point each, yeah. you can take their guns out of commission for, like, a turn or two. For 1d6 turns, to be specific. Okay, I'm going to use those two points. Which will be... You said 1d6 turns. Let's see. Yes! Okay. That's, that's a bit of time. They're both out of commission for like half a minute. Which is probably long enough to get up to them. And then... Uh, that's your significant action for the turn, by the way. Yeah. Can I use my uh, minor action after uh, Como to aim? shoots this guy just to run? To what? Okay. Wait, that would be a significant action to move, right? Uh, No, movement is a minor action. Yeah, I want to use my... I'm going to aim, because I'll just move once Kamo shoots Kamo. the guy down. I'll be shoot combat. this man. Yes. Show the class how it's done. Okay. Also, you guys now get a message that we have a little bit of time. Okay. Here's the shot. Uh, 
Nice. Seven. One. Oh. Um. Six plus seven. That's the damage she takes. <laughs> you're but, you're so good with that thing. So you like were terrifyingly good with this gun. I am afraid if you had your good gun. <laughs> This is this uh, these yeah, guys would unexist. This is like yeah, the efficiency because... of how some care how, how they use the the phaser sometimes. Like you just aim and delete him, non lethally. Well, that's that's him out of the way, I guess. Okay, and now I am rushing in. I'm assuming the other two are coming behind. As you charge on inwards on your 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 separate turn. What's this? This this thing Comwa just posted. Oh, it's that guy. Mm -hmm. And then they hired him. Mm -hmm. And I went nowhere. <laughs> All right. Clap, clap. I do that because I feel like it. So I'll let you walk into the structure past the, the dust of destruction. We get to engage with melee combat. Because a dude with a big fat... What does he have again? Did he have a hammer? Because I think I'm mis misreading this here. Let's see. I mean, you wouldn't know him, but I'm just going to tell you to. This is Waka Bargo. Oh. And he has... Wait, ooh. this is the guy we were looking for? Yeah, he, he has a stun fist. Oh, so when you, when, when you come up to him, he, like, tries to deck you as he pops around the corner. So the way the melee combat works, it's pretty simple. It's the same kind of, like, punch-punch kind of stuff. But you can dodge or parry. Dodging means you add your dex modifier or your athletics dex. So athletics dex plus dex as a penalty, or you can parry, which you mean you use your melee attack skill instead. It's up to you, really. Point is, this uh, guy. I'm using my, my dex. Point is, this guy's coming like right up to you. Oh, he's coming right up to you. And he's going to get you good. What's he got? That's an effect of six. What is this cool fist? I also get plus two to dodge. Nice. Oh shit, I have an idea. So, it's actually effective four. <laughs> I have a hilarious idea. This is going to be nasty. So, he, he comes out swinging. And when he hits you, it takes you a moment to realize this. But whatever he's using, um, your electro electronic powers mean that you're kind of in tune, but also means that when you get smacked with electric energy and it bypasses your field, aka it starts hitting you, it sears in a special kind of way. Sort of like what a flashbang is to most people. But on a more nervous system level. Whatever he just hit you with, just your shield went, whoop, your field was gone. But you took no damage otherwise. Then he turns his oh attention my. back to you and he gives this loud... <sighs> He screams something, but your language shaft is uncertain what he's saying. Como, you're down there. Yes. Zala's slightly preoccupied. What do you do? Well, I'm rushing in to help them. I have a, a bit of an insane idea, but I think it might work out. What is Talk it? Talk to him. Yeah, well, yes, exactly. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, I am a robot, and I've heard their relative talk, and I've been thinking of just trying to distract them with the voice of their relative. I was thinking we could just try to talk him down. I mean, talking him down would also work, but right now I'm just going to knock him out and then talk to him. Sensible. <laughs> this might actually overheat my gun, but that's fine. So what are you doing? So I think uh, the minor well, action is going to be trying to talk to him using a... The yeah, the AI-15 is his dad's voice. The minor action is moving up. Moving up to this position, which is something Gomo okay. said, said he did. Okay. Well, it's talking, so it's probably. Can I can I see reaction. them and Zyla fighting actually? Presumably, yes. I mean, to be fair, he literally swung at Zyla and knocked her field out, so yes. I know, but you you've mentioned that they might be inside the ship or something. They're inside the ship, yes. But when you move up on hmm. the ramp into the ship, yes, you can see them. Okay. Oh, not the particular case. I am going to be rushing in, and I am going to uh, talk to them in the voice of their relative, so they get distracted. Honestly, I imagine that when he walked up there, when when Zyla walked up there, the guy did that swing you get with Yakuza, like random encounters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Where like take a swing and then it's like cracks knuckles. Yeah. Gosh, Como, I have no idea what you have to roll to get this guy to, to fuck around. 
because you're messing uh, with his just this, I mean, I mean, look, if if you suddenly like, oh, you you know, you're killing the enemies of your plan, and then your relative is like, I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just enough to distract him. For Can a you moment. distract him? Yeah, and Can... the moment he gets distracted, then I'm gonna shoot him with a with a with a stun rifle. Roll me, ne roll me, roll me the inverse of your social standing plus your deception as you try to fuck with his inverse head. Of the... Yeah. Inverse so basically, of the you treat negatives as positive, positive and negative, because your social standing is probably like how much you personally think you can get away with. Mine is six, which is zero. So inverse of that is going to be zero. Your social standing. Oh, oh, oh no, that's Atlas. That's uh, that's goofy. Hmm? Excuse me. Yeah, cool. Well. Okay, so let's see. What else do I need through deception? Yeah. Deception. Deception is likewise untrained, so that would be minus three actually. You don't have jack of all trades. He does. It's uh, minus two. Minus two would be. Uh, yeah. So two d six minus two. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That's a five. That's not terrible. He it's doesn't seem terrible. affected by it at all. Or perhaps he considers Zyla to be a bit greater priority. Probably. Although, actually, um, I imagine that his attention would turn to you. Yes, as it should. Well, I guess that you still have your, your significant action. What do you do with it? Open fire. I'll just shoot him straight up. He's a big target in a small cramped space. Give him the goods. Yep. What up, Bingo? So, 2 to 6 plus 6 plus 1 plus the attack 14. Roll uh, 5d6 plus uh, 6. Takes 23. Cool. Alright, now this guy's gonna pull a dirty move on you. Because he's an That's asshole like that. It's fine, me too. Uh, Zala. Yeah? He tries to grab you. What is your melee unarmed? Uh, not good. For some reason. Okay, well, to be fair, you use your bow and your, your bioelectrics more than anything. But, he reaches for you, and he grabs you, and he suddenly slams you in front of Como's fire. <laughs> I love it. So, Como, um, yes. Zala, you take whatever that damage is as stun damage. So, it might knock <laughs> you out. Thank you, Como. I wasn't the one who put you in, the, in harm's way. Hey, you're fighting a big boy. He gets to play dirty. <laughs> Yes, that's fine. <laughs> so what's uh, what's your resistance? I think... Let's see, yeah. I think shock suit is... No, wait. I think the shock suit actually has, like, 12 native. Uh, 12 protection. Yeah, but I need to know if, like, any of that is field, because if you had a field, you knocked it out. Uh, nope, the field is for the TP suit. Marvelous. In that case, <clears throat> you take, well, that number minus the 12, which makes 11, which means you are exactly knocked out. <laughs> Oh. Thank you, Como. <laughs> he immediately Sorry. tosses them aside, Como. Firing an assault weapon into melee. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's an automatic weapon. He can't... I think you can, actually. If he's going to throw them away, I'm just going to shoot him the moment they do that. I mean, I guess you technically could, but do note that you are at risk of perforating Xyla further in the process. <laughs> Uh, but it's stun damage. Does it actually affect people further? I wouldn't recommend shooting someone with more stun damage than you think is reasonable. Okay, but you did say to throw them away. Also, where's Poland? They wouldn't do that if you keep firing. That's like the thing they do when you're done. Okay, is well, in Poland that case, I'm just going to give give it a pause until they throw it away. Okay, well, that's your turn, then. Do you just call me an it? Thank you. Shield. Contextually, it. Yes. He tosses it aside, and then he charges right at you. Yes. Giving that good old big growl. Then, well, he's basically going to... What is your unarmed fighting skill like, Como? Let's see. Probably none. Um, but let's take a look at the numbers. Cool. Where would that be? What uh, tab? Melee? Melee, yes. Yep. Zero. I think you have to roll for this. Okay. What do I roll? You're unarmed. Melee. Which I think comes with your strength? Yeah. So it's going to be 2d6 plus 1 minus 2. Yeah. Just minus 1 total. I know they can normally succeed. No, it's athletics strength. You succeed. That's not this. This is fight. This so is 2d6 fight. minus 1, correct? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can no sell it, which I probably cannot. Como, he takes you and he grapples you. Okay. Paul, while this is going on, what are you doing? Are you just kind of staying in cover? Because at this point, you probably hear like the, the rough and tumbleness. Uh, yes, but, uh, well, my first thought was, uh, when the, uh, when the jammer went out to, uh, reach for the, uh, the hostages and, uh, see if they are both, uh, if they are all alive, uh, 
and uh, sent them a message to tell them to get ready for an assault. That was the first thing I was thinking of. Mindscape is a very pleasant thing when people are happy and content mm. and glad. These people are fearing for their lives because what you get is this. If hell has a whirling whirlpool of the the souls of the damned fearing for eternal punishment, then this is pretty close. Their mindscapes are this backlash that you have to contend with very briefly. Oh. Nothing you're not used to, because you hack things a lot, and sometimes people get very emotional about the fact that you're hacking things, but oh. this gives you a chill. But they're, they're, they got the message at the very least. Como, mm -hmm. there's a big monkey man on top of you, and he's just slamming yes. his fists into your armor to yes. crack you open like a nut. Paulum, yes. don't forget that you technically have the authority to contact the local police and interfere. Yes, I was thinking about uh, two things, actually. Uh, try to um, to uh, distract uh, the, the, the allies uh, they could have around by... Uh, uh, hacking into the lights again and uh, shutting them uh, off uh, approximately well, in a wide zone around us. And uh, yes, contact, um, well, search for help, essentially. I was thinking about searching for help. Cool. But uh, contacting the authorities is good. Get all sec on the case. Come on, uh, there's a big man um, on top of you right now. As mentioned, he's trying to crack you like a nut. What do you do yes. about the situation? Well, I have a couple ideas. First and foremost, I have the mechanic and he's using some sort of mechanical fist. Is it possible for me to try and mess with that? Failing that, he's probably still wearing the headphones and I have communications interface. So I could try just blowing his eardrums off. That's not a bad plan. I like that plan. Now, again, I'm going to get... If there was Benny's, I would give you one because that's actually a good fucking plan. That is a very good plan. <laughs> I actually like it. All right, this Como, what are you doing? What? Well, I guess just the years, I guess. No, I need. Uh, okay, gotcha. All right, Como, well, let's take a look. W what do you have that, that you could use for this? I mean, this guy seems to have a Mindscape implant. So, sure. This would probably be either Mind Burn or Informatic Mindscape, depending on how exactly you're handling this. Well, my Informatics is exactly. Although, zero, actually, so now that I, I think about it, comms. you probably could use interface comms, like send out a very short-range emergency broadcast that targets his ears. You are an SCI agent. You are authorized to send those. As boosted fart noise MP3. <laughs> no, I go with what I sent. Cartoon splat noise. <laughs> this is hyper loud. Hold on. Let me listen to it. Dial off internet. Yes, exactly. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that give would the, be amusing. Give me the goods, Como. Add your intel. Uh, add well, whatever mental stat you think works. Your education or intelligence, intellect. That's both zero. That's fine. So it's uh, That's roll what I mean. two d six plus two. two plus zero essentially. Yeah. Okay. Up to nine. Well, don't forget you can get a boon on this because I think it's a good plan. I think it will work because he's like busy fighting. So should I roll one one? One d6? more d six. Okay. It's a six. Holy shit! That makes for a fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> So, what actually happens is that you hear this, you can feel through his bones as he's grabbing you, this, or whatever you sent through his brain, Deal and then noises. you see whatever he has on his head are, starts to smoke, like little thin strips of smoke come out, and his eyes roll back as whatever just hit him in the head probably concussed him. Oh my god. That's what now you get. Now him. That's what you get when you buy fancy headphones, kids. I, I was told not to kill him. I have three strength. I think that might just Beats actually Bye. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, at this point, whatever you want to do to him is automatic. Like, there's, there's no resistance on this guy. But yeah, I guess I'm going to headbutt him so he lets me go. I mean, he's already letting you go because, again, is. Oh, in that yeah, case, I'm just going to let him. I'm not going to go over, over the top of this, like they said. Do yeah, just give him a guy. short range burst with your stun rifle and, you know, knock him out. So, yeah, exactly. as this was all going on, the guys from upstairs were actually coming downstairs and they were planning to reinforce their boss, but when they see him, look like, fall over without you doing anything, they try to scoot past you. Irrelevant of what you right. do, I don't care about the details. Because Can I wake up and burn them? <laughs> that takes an hour, but we'll get to the... Irrelevant of what happens, this is how you sit about an hour later. One person has been taken to the hospital in emergency condition. Oh. Um, because the hostage was throwing a fit, they didn't get him in the head cleanly, but it wasn't a very nice wound either. 
Better than dead, we'll say. After all, if he gets the commonality tech in time, that's good. For the rest, every other person here has been apprehended, because when Pollum made the signal, those guys that were walking past you, Como, they didn't get to the exit before, like, the security came in, because Noasha might have lied about how covert she was treating this. Yes. She might have told the cops to stay on the alert and everything. Not to mention you're in an industrial fine. terrain, there's probably, like, a patrolling officer, so... Yes. So, after an hour, Zala's, like, patched up, given all the stimulants they need to get all their endurance back. Because it's just I blame exclusively you, Kamo. <laughs> no, that's fine. I don't mind if you blame me. You, you technically got shot by me. It's honestly kind of weird to be, like, entirely treated by a medical staff of monkeys. Which, which means they have more hands to work with. Does your feet work like hands, too? It's actually more efficient than just humans. Latex gloves on their feet. Ain't that something? I mean, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> If anything, they're probably wearing some sort of, like, you know, like, exoskeleton that walks for them so they can use their legs as well as their feet. Anyway, Thankfully, it only there's takes there's... me about ten minutes to get on my electro side because of my battery. <laughs> we can plug you in the nearest outlet. <laughs> just plug Zyla into the wall. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the tail is actually, like, just a, a standard three-pin. <laughs> twist power twist the top plug. off. You twist the top <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a micro or USB, can you imagine Zala got a little smashed uh, no. by, by the guy? It's, it's and you like... plug it in, and you just hear connect, disconnect, connect, it's, disconnect. So <laughs> it's it's one of those abandoned USB B or whatever types. Yes. Need, like, a God, it's the one from my old phone. Yes, and it, it just keeps do, doing that noise. Connect, disconnect. A lightning adapter. Blast you, Steve Jobs. Ugh. As mentioned, it's an hour later when you are on your feet and everything is like, well, probably not an hour, but like a little bit later in the evening when this whole situation is taken care of. And there's a news crew, of course, who are like doing the proper reporting about like a big raid happening on a nearby hangar located in, well, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name from time to time either. Col Kalumne. Daini Sango is still alive, but he gives you disapproving looks, almost as if he expected you to prevent everything that just happened. More than saving him. Sorry, we were a thousand miles away at mm. the time. He gives you a little snuff and snark and wonders why you're still here. Because in case it's you like haven't, an hour in case you haven't noticed there's problems beyond what is here. And as he says that, almost as if fate itself is Wanting to give this guy a little extra... Ooh. There's this... Blink. Remember when I said when the Mindscape goes off, everything gets crisp and sharp? Like, that happens yes. for like a brief moment. And he aim points his finger up. To the sky. Where the station is? The Geosynchronous Station, yes. Did it blow up or something? It's still there. And you're pretty sure it's not that far that light would take, like, minutes to travel. Right. It'd blow up. Okay, so, well, we're gonna look at it. It's still there. That's what I just said to Como. Oh, fair enough. Fine, I'm oh, gonna... lost connection? He gets frustrated, like I get, where oh, he's, sorry, he's unreasonably mean about his expectations. And he flicks on, like, a little compatible broadcasting it's happening on the station because you can tell because it's commonality tech and you can see the planet from the little window apparently they're recording a broadcast for the morning and it's happening at night so that she can escape under the dark of night because his guest is none other than Lady Apona Zaran the official leader of the, the Fivers she's on the full broadcast news having this lovely chat and he looks at you again, as if expecting you to already know everything that he's learned. Oh my god, I mean... And he just dumped the information to us. He, he, he's yet to give it, if he has any. Oh god. Is this the information we should have learned? If things had gone we... differently, you would have learned it by yourself, yes, but... Here, here we go, this is how it... 
This is this is what has happened. Like if you, had, if you lately. like if you have actively listened in on the conversation between Bargo and his minion, you could have learned this. Or if you actually gone up to the hostages in a more organic way than everyone coming downstairs to take care of it. There's a lot of ways this could have come by. But well, I mean, we had a lot going on there. With like him. I said, yes, he's unreasonably <laughs> placing expectations on you as if you should have known this like hours ago. Uh, that's fine. I'm just straight up gonna look up the news. Or maybe he just prefers <laughs> that you grovel for him. Oh, I'm not doing that one. Check I mean, the internet gonna... lately. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do that. I... My Jesus source. Christ. I made well, it the fuck up. I am a protocol droid, if anything. <laughs> Como, Excuse the... me. I'm an assassin droid. Como, the news doesn't turn anything up on this. Okay. Well, in that particular case, I am going to very politely ask him to bestow us with the knowledge that uh, we uh, lowly drones might not necessarily have. Como. Yes. Your little spacecraft that brought you to the surface. Mm -hmm. I started to land on the landing pad where that, on um, like a separate one, like off to the side, mm -hmm. and the gate starts to open, and he still looks at you expectantly. Oh my god, we need to go up there. Technically speaking, Breath of Dawn has promised her, what was it, amnesty? I'm not going to give amnesty to terrorists, let alone these monkeys. They've not exactly made a positive impression on me, and they are continuing to degrade it ever further. My endless and boundless patience for these primitive creatures is wearing thin. And it was up to me. We'd glass it over and make it a lovely national park, but no, no, no. Now, let me g give me a moment. I need to get this one yeah. right because he's the kind of guy who would say this exactly as it is. Oh, well. uh, where is it again? Game. Okay, no. I need to know what's in her belly. Okay, just being vague about it. <sighs> a gauntlet. The lady has a bomb inside of her, is basically what you get out of him. Jesus. The bomb that she has is like a... a oh, it actually has a name here. Oh. It's a sophisticated device, a flattened disc and 10 centimeters in diameter. It's made of commonality level tech and a sufficient destructive capability that would cause the entire Alpha Node complex to crash into the crater port high and presumably take the rest of it down to the surface. Although it's unclear where such a thing would land if that were to happen. Point oh. is that apparently Bargo has been chit-chatting about the fact that they're planning to make a big move tonight. Blowing up the Mindscape for one, and then making their demands with Daini Sango as one of their top hostages afterwards. Effectively, putting everyone on the backest possible foot. Jesus Christ, okay, fair enough. That's actually pretty clever. Okay, we, we should handle that. Well, Donny Senko technically doesn't care if the Mindscape implant, Mindscape instance gets wiped, because they can replace that, who fucking cares? Technically speaking, Breath of Dawn is considered a well-esteemed sentience, and he is technically on that station, and if it blows up, he'll be gone. And hmm. also, the Mindscape going away would cause, like, a lot of interference with medical... Ooh, there would be a lot of people yes. that would experience inconveniences. Well, we'll have to disable them somehow. You better be fast. From what he said, it sounded like the end of the program was when he was going to make his move. Right. Okay. So Fair chop, enough. chop already. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, just for the sake of reference, I uh, would like to request them to try and pull some strings to have them go on a commercial break <laughs> to give us a couple more minutes. I would love to. But Breath of Dawn considers me and my far more competent <coughs> planning skills <coughs> to be a curmudgeon old man, and he doesn't listen to me anymore. To be fair, he Your technically, plan. as Ambassador Liaison, he wouldn't have that control anyway. Your plan That's was true. terrorism. But does the intelligence know about the bomb? <laughs> if he did, he wouldn't let her on. Mm. Fair enough. Well, I mean, I guess we can contact it as we fly in. Or at least try to. Uh, yes, realistically, we, we can't go there before anything happens, I would guess. So. I mean, we're not we're not like squishy humans, so we don't care about um, extra G's. So we could just burn straight to it. The Besides. box looks left and right. What? <laughs> <laughs> if you manage to successfully, I mean, yeah, fair enough. If you manage to successfully I... arrest her, you at the very least make the five us look like fools, and reinforce my case on the matter. That's true. Your case was terrorism. My yes. case is right now that all security has proven its incompetence, and he says this, by the way. While they're here, Mindscape or not, that's big Ben move. That's 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 fucking rude. It's like, okay, cool, they're gonna put you in a trash compactor, buddy. 
I'm gonna put you in a trash compactor. To be honest, this <laughs> yeah, does seem like this, this does seem like the kind of guy who's like, I'm so rich and powerful, I don't have to care. No one can kill me. I get put in the jail for ransom. Jeez, okay, you almost fine. died. I'm, 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 I'm loading into the the, the little shuttle mm -hmm. thingy. He doesn't wave you off. He just stands there looking grouchy. The other people there, of course, are very grateful, but they're in shock, so they're not going to give you any handshakes quite yet. No, see, the better part is we're not waiting for him to wave us off. Yes. Even if he was going to, we're just going to ignore him. Fuck this guy. You get on the ship. Come on. The lady, your, your, <coughs> your good old bud is yes. asking you how you're feeling. A little terrible. I just shot my friend. But they didn't yeah, die. I'm, That's good. That hurt. Well... <sighs> I'll let you, you shoot me later. You get, you get the sassy response that this isn't the first time you're getting better at it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> See? I miss you, but I'm getting better at my aim. Uh. No, no, you say, I miss you, but my aim's yes, getting sir. better. <laughs> well, I'm going to go and collect my extra arrows, because I'm sure I lost a couple. I presume that you can just get a make point to crank them out for you. <laughs> like little... I like to imagine I hand grind the uh, tips, though. It's in a... Uh... Sila, why thing? why are you using inferior archaic blueprints? Because I'm from an archaic. Why is planet. there a why is there a rapidly spinning stone in your room? Right. With a like little foot pedal. What the hell is that for? Why does what your do you foot mean? power what? this device? Why 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 is there a thing? That's how I shave in the morning. <laughs> I'm a fox. I don't shave. No, I I he shaves I, himself I, I with the whetstone. I'm a, I'm a robot. I rust occasionally. It's like <laughs> a five degree shadow, it. like bender, but it's rust. Listen, you just put a little grease on top. <laughs> marvelous. Just works like it looks like. Mwah. All right, we're getting into a proper countdown, which is to say, this ends whenever I'm like too tired to keep going. So you better do it fast. Yeah. Vroom. As your ship goes upward, um, you get all the information you need because you know this is a commonality. F Why wouldn't they have the blueprints and give them to you freely? Mm -hmm. Oh, so is the bomb sentient? I love that you asked me that question because, funnily <laughs> enough, the answer is yes. What? <laughs> because it's commonality tech. It's commonality tech, so it would probably contain a sentience. However, there's a little more to it than that. But we'll get to that. Don't worry. It's a fun twist. Point is, this is what you're dealing with. The zip plant's located in the top. There's the bridge, the docking sections. The bridge is where you're basically going. Are any of you any good at piloting? I am. A little. This is a small I craft, specifically by the way. a small craft. Excellent. Then you're going to have to provide some support. Because as you're approaching this thing, for some reason the corpus has decided to start opening fire on you. Careful, Tano. It's the corpus. No, wait. It's the grenier. It was always the grenier. It was always the grenier, yeah. And corpus just refers to bodies. Yes. But... As mentioned, the thing starts to fire, so can you give me a roll to see if the ship makes it there without getting completely blasted by the automated defenses, which... You know, so... that does kind of justify their position if they have an armed weapons platform hovering directly over the planet like that, but hey! It also looks like a fucking knife! Yeah, you shot us a picture, it's actually pretty cool. Does the ship that we are on have any sort of weaponry at all? I mean, you, you there's, there's a plus two because of your... <coughs> there, there's defenses and everything. And you get a plus two because you're getting assistance from the right. onboard AI. But it's mostly... Ten. Yes. I was going to tell you that it's good enough to keep yourself on the on the down low and defensive. Um, there are a few options how you can do this. And it's up to you to decide how you want to do it. They can go for, like, a proper parking. You could try to hack into the instance and just take it from there. Or... You could, you know... Try and park it proper. You can go EVA, park it, or take it virtual. Could go EVA. Probably approaching from different directions would be a good idea. Like, look, if some, if if all else fails, I can literally snipe the person through their body into the bomb, disable it that way. I can also kind of do that. But that's like the last last resort re resort kind of thing. I don't want to kill them. Wait, can't you just like talk to the bomb and make out with the sentience or something? I mean, I could, but I'm not good at that. That's the problem. Go My on. own ship hates me. As you suggest using weaponry, you are politely informed that um, the recording studio technically has a glass window that faces outside, and if you break that, that explosive would, decompression that would probably kill the people on board, and that's naughty. Yeah, I played that's entirely why I get inside first. 
too much uh, hard space. Please do not yeah. explosively decompress. There are no clones. I'm not. I'm not going to de explosively decompress. Uh, I am going to go EVA and essentially try to get in for an airlock of some sort. I mean, to be fair for you, EVA is just opening the door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What I'm saying uh, is, hey, Poland EVA. character. Yeah, but you're good but at hacking Zala, stuff. Zala needs to I, breathe, so I can get a so mask. Space isn't actually cold. Who knew? Uh, Poland character. Yes, it's not hurt your ears. Uh, you're good at hacking. Yes. Okay. Are there any external airport uh, airlocks you can get us into that we could EVA our way into? I can look into it. I suppose. There are several. Uh... The way that this thing is built up, it has like a whole drone hive at the bottom. It has multiple entry points and exit points located around it, which in turn access the walkways inside the small habitable portion. So, yes? And that gives me a second question, though. <laughs> How much access can you get into this into this uh, station? Uh, well, I guess it's not a too much. <laughs> um, I don't know. I can uh, I can try to 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 get as close as possible. Okay, so my plan, which would be very difficult, I'm certain. Can you hack into the life support system and turn it off for like 30 seconds? To, to disable what exactly? <laughs> the people who happen to be in there. Yes, but disable what? The air, the gravity, the... Air. the uh... Uh, the pressure, yes, air, okay. probably air. basically breathable atmosphere. Yeah, just breathable they pass atmosphere. out. You put some more air in there. They're they're down. We get right in there. Did you know that if you just put too much nitrogen in the atmosphere, people die without even noticing what's wrong? They'll just fall asleep. Or carbon. And carbon apparently makes you get a headache or something towards the end. Nitrogen is like this painless one. But yes, yeah, so we just mess with the air quality. There are a lot of uh, safety systems in place. Can you roll me your Mindscape fancy stuff, good sir? Mindscape, uh, oh, Mindscape. Yes, mm. informatics Mindscape. As you fuck around in there, and probably your intellect or education. Yeah, yeah. If, education probably because you're dealing with like when you try to crack in, it's a standard ship system AI. Like Breath of Dawn seems to be preoccupied with the interview. So it's all like automated self-defenses. Well, if I had uh, education... Uh... Jesus, Jesus, yes. <laughs> well, despite the fact that, um, you know, trying to turn off the life support in a station that values life so much, mm -hmm. how do you as a person feel about the fact that you're taking... I mean, this could go horribly wrong. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, if Breath of Dawn uh, explodes... Uh... It's going to be the same, so I guess it's a risk I'm willing to take. So, because I because I feel like you have a right to know, um, the difficulty skill goes up to pl 14 plus. So, mm -hmm. an you can do anything. <laughs> an 18 is bullshit. Yes, but yeah. it's a, it, it has plus three form education, so it's. Yeah, also you rolled like almost max there. All right, <laughs> cracking in. I'm in. You tweak the thing in such a way that the atmosphere becomes not toxic, but like they'll, f they'll, they'll lose oxygen enough that they'll fall unconscious. However, you also come to the realization this will almost certainly mean the Breath of Dawn will turn their attention outwards and probably mm -hmm. have some questions. What is the ship doing? What, are you, what is the action that's undertaking as he's setting this up and the, the effect is taking place? I'm assuming while this happens, this is when... Uh... Yeah, you know, after I've given my plan in character mm -hmm. and we get started, mm -hmm. is when uh, the robot and the fox, who probably has you know an EVA helmet or something on, uh, jump in and go through an airlock. I would like to point out that most citizens have access to a pressurized T uh, P suit, which is specifically for this. Although I think the shock suit also provides similar functions. Okay, I'd assume yeah, I can cover it up. No, wait, I think the shock suit is just like. Meant for combat, isn't like pressurized or anything. It doesn't matter. Point is, you f swoosh your way over, I guess. Yeah, then if Polem wants to join us for direct assistance, he can come in after he gets his job done. 
Yes, uh, shouldn't we uh, send a bomb alert or something? Uh, maybe not be the only I... one uh, knowing about the fact that uh, everything is going to explode soon. No. Send one out. What should we well, do? Well, I. Okay, uh, said, uh, uh... He basically wants to send a warning out to the people on the station. Well, not to everyone, but. Uh... Tell, t t tell Breath of Dawn uh, that uh, something is up with uh, uh, I forgot the name of the rival leader. Zala. And Zala. Yeah. You land inside. I assume you're taking the the drone entrance instead of the normal EVA locks? Probably. Yeah, just to avoid uh, normal detection. Indeed. There are a few scanners here. You would know that, because these things are meant for like automated systems, which self-scan and regulate more than good enough to they'll need it. You slide through the dark passages. At first, there's this white paneling with lights, like hidden locations, destinations, and in some cases, probably even rooms. A gaping maw consumes you until you enter into a dark space where only very faint guiding lights provide you with direction. You follow Pollum's instructions on where exactly to go, and find a panel that leads into what is basically like a small airlock where you assume they would pass like small items back and forth. Doing so, you begin to feel the gravity from inside, and as you pop in the other end, uh, Zyla, your suit refuses to shut down its life support systems as it mentions that the atmosphere is toxic. Whereas that Como is probably just like, I'm on the floor. <laughs> I personally I personally like to imagine that when you are on the outside, like you actually were upside down compared to the interior, because this is how it goes with rooms like this. Yeah, and then when um, I fall in, I have to like parkour roll. There are I some do like this awesome uh, three-point hero landing. Kamo just lands. There are some people here, but there's also like a sentient, uh, excuse me, a synthetic person who seems very concerned with an uh, an organic that is like on the ground and starting to look hazy. What do you do? What, where do you want to go? What do you want to try to achieve? Okay, so the best option is to get to the bomb as fast as physically possible. Yes, mm -hmm. and either try to disarm it. There. And then, or try to physically remove it from the station. So if it does go off, it doesn't go off anywhere close to it. What we should also try and not get the synthetic people too worked up because that could go bad. I've played Alien Isolation. I mean, as long as they don't start saying "tut tut," it's gonna be fine. Jesus Christ, man! Are you Como? They 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 literally just called you like a berserking monkey. Pretty much. That's fine. I mean, I've, I've heard in the past five months, I've heard worse. <laughs> you are on the station. You've taken care of Zoran for time being. However, as you begin to make your moves, Breath of Dawn, beginning to realize what's going on, turns its attention towards you. You hear yes. over the mindscape a bleep. Hello. Your presence has currently been detected. You have not entered the station according to the official and intended routes. Clarification wanted. What is your end goal and where are you intending to go? You are currently detected as being armed. I would like to, as responsive Zyla permits me, or if Poland permits me, just dump all the information we have on the bomb, specifically. That, that makes sense. I mean... You know, hey, you bomb, might... We're well. trying to fix this, and the guy who uh, Dainis and Go is, like, you're not actually talking to him. For whatever Breath reason. of Dawn so gives you a, a pretty much a, like, get out of here. The, he... he... You begin to sound like Daini San Go, having such little trust in the locals. I mean, I am here enough, building but... bridges, and you are here about blowing them up. Mm, well, we literally just first... stopped a terrorist attack like two hours ago. Yes. Hmm. What would it take to persuade them to give a quick scan to the person we're trying to get to? So f they're knocked out, so they're not going to see anything. So in order some to... some interpersonal skills. <coughs> How do you have, a, have any good skills you think you could throw at him? Because he's... Unless you have a good argument. Like, a, a better way to present this, because, you know... Maybe... If you remind him of something. Don't forget, people... People can, can be a little uh, hasty. Mm. Like, when I say a person doesn't believe you, I usually mean that on, like, the superficial version of what you present to them doesn't mm -hmm. sound convincing. 
I mean, true. we are special force uh, SCI. Well, so... I don't want to bring in titles because that just that's an appeal to authority. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. Now, in case you forgot, so... in case you forgot, because. It's been a while, and I haven't mentioned it no. since. Uh, Breath of Dawn is one of the supposedly one of the faction who like to keep conversations open. Breath of Dawn mm -hmm. has been very much trying to build bridges and communicate with the local population. He's had a lot of like local broadcasts and you know fun commonality chat shows and game shows. Very much trying to make the commonality seem nice and and have a cultural exchange instead of enforcing and and imposing anything. Just clever way to approach it. Drop the clone words at the TC because they're Charlie. <laughs> Maul. <laughs> so, you've presented to him the facts of what you know, but that's yeah. like all you do when you say that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna pop in. Okay, I'm you gonna have to try to. I'm gonna try to bring up the fact that yes, we've been having issues with them, but we're trying to prevent an attack because there's been attempts to destabilize the discussions. If we can just get there. And find this bomb. The negotiation with the fibers, the talks will stay open. But if this goes off and you get hurt, they'll probably glass this planet. So we he, really want to stop this. Breath of Dawn replies with a very straightforward answer that honestly you kind of should have seen coming. I find it highly incredible that me, one of the more trusted individuals among this population, would be considered a viable target for their operations. The destruction of a Mindscape node is incredibly likely to cause significant damage across the planet, in addition to interfering with peace operations. This action is senseless, and while definitely a grand gesture, not one too likely to achieve their intended goal. And that's the point. They're not acting rationally with this. So you are saying that they are merely stupid monkeys? No, I'm no, saying that saying some people are angry and they're trying to cause a problem to go back to the old ways. Still. My trust within Eponazora remains the same. I believe that she was honest when she said she would come here unarmed and uninterested in the acts of violence. Now, perhaps we can turn our attention to the actual damage that you, personally, have already caused by interfering with the life support of the station. Well, if you ask us to... to uh, lift up uh, the, uh, the Aki... I we can do that, to... but I would uh, urge you to recons reconsider your position about uh, Zyla. Mm, maybe you trust her, but... Uh, I must say that I find, it difficult to be careful. To... I find it difficult to trust the party that is currently messing around within my corpus and systems, compared to the person that I have built up a rapport with. If you do not mind my cynicism. So let's connect the dots here. You built up a rapport with this person. That's great. I, your work has been very well done. But they recently kidnapped uh, multiple members of uh, the whatever our faction is called. Oh, see. Them. They, they the, like, the people they kidnapped from were technically part of like the connection division or whatever they are like the integration part, whatever yeah, they, i'm not gonna look it up they, uh, they kidnapped dainy sango which admittedly he's very unliked i don't like him either isn't it suspicious that dainy sango would become a hostage of a situation despite him wanting to escalate the matters is it not more likely yeah. that he himself either organized or allowed himself to become captured that's unlikely because we actually knew uh of one of the people who was there and they were Definitely involved in negative activities before Dainy Sango was Clarify. coming up with this. We talked to the father of one of the members of the Fivers and learned some of his history. He had been engaged in this for some time. This Who seems is like this a plan. Individual? The name fuck him. His name. I'm trying to remember his name. What the fuck? Like, anyone can answer this. You don't have to be sneaky about this, Marty. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying this under my breath because I'm that's, trying to that's, that's, that's fine. Fight. I'm, I'm, I'm whispering it's my microphone. is not picking You're literally it. in, like, a group DM Mindscape chat. That's fine. Yeah, so you guys can, you. <laughs> can, you, can, can you imagine while this conversation is happening, is just, Paul is just posting memes? <laughs> yeah, walk up, Mario. Don't anymore. 
Vaga Bargo got it roped into this whole. I, I assume I could call it like a terrorist. No, he's asking you about the the person that you talked to about Bargo. His dad. Vaga what Bargo. was his name? Vaga Bargo's dad. Oh gosh, do I remember? Vaga Bargo. <laughs> Senior. Wait, no, it no. Vaga Bargo disappeared. He is the kid. Mm hmm. Yes. And the father, I don't remember the name. Vaga Bargo Senior. Yes. Exactly, because junior and senior. Yes, because exactly <laughs> that was the thing. That's why I kept saying that. <laughs> Breath of Dawn watches breathlessly <laughs> as, <laughs> as Sila has the answer. <laughs> and yeah, this is just it. like. Bzzz. Look, I'm. I got hit on the head just now. It, it's gonna take a, a moment. <laughs> you got clunked. Breath of Dawn will humor you and activates this particular sensory array that's designed to detect, like, I guess if this is like a high fence bomb, but probably like a zip bomb. So it goes mm -hmm. to do like a little, little zip scan. Beep, beep, boop. <coughs> Pollum, you're still inside of a system, so you still got your fingers like in there. Um, mm -hmm. He gets back, like... N <sighs> he gets back what are like dummy messages. Because you're on the, 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 the back end, you sort of see the message go in, and then... Mm -hmm. It gets one back, but it doesn't add up on your end because you're like a man in the middle. <laughs> the, 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 the communication doesn't add up. Okay, so, so I'm, bet I'm better at trading his systems as he is. <laughs> so, so basically, someone is sitting in the. W it's like he couldn't mm -hmm. detect this bomb if he wanted to. Oh, okay. Um. So they took precautions. Yeah, because Pollum is like a man in the middle. He literally mm -hmm. sees the message come in, and then he sees, like, the other guy send, like, a, it's fine. And then he sees the actual sensor say, it's bad. Yes, but, well, I can simply, since we are using the Mindscape, I can simply send off this, uh, this feed. Set the logs. This, this messages. <laughs> yes, the logs. <laughs> okay. The middle man. Well, this has been going uh, on, I imagine that Zyla and, to... and Como have been, like, continually making their way as far as they could. Oh, yeah, no, I'm still walking. Until you, like, <laughs> bump into a door that's locked because Breath of Dawn needs to be dealt with first. Yes. When he gets from Pollum this message of, like, oh... The doors slide open. You're inside this lovely studio that you just saw on, like, the TV with Dainese and Go. It's, it's, it's one of those big broad suits. It's got all those big screens in the back, which all these fancy shapes, but it's also real because they have the actual props for it. And you have a beautiful view of all Kennedy from here. You can see the crater, the clouds. It... I assume the camera is still rolling, too. It's really weird to... No, he turned them off when, like, Epona started going down. But mm. when you gaze down, it's actually... Kind of neat to see that you were like in that one little area where there's a lot of clouds, and now you're up here. Yes. Makes weather feel weird when you're able to shift perspectives like that. Epona's on the ground. Her stomach mm -hmm. is glowing. Oh my god, it's this fucking fifth element. <laughs> I'm not kidding, by the way. The actual art in the book does in fact depict her stomach as starting to glow. Uh-oh. No, that's just the f uh, Why did it only pick up the frame? I'm not sure. How are you making these screenshots, by the way? Those aren't screenshots, I'm just plucking them out of the PDF. Oh. And this is a screenshot. I I, I don't know why the background is a fucking brain in a jar, but I imagine they just took this art from elsewhere and it happened to match the situation somewhat. Also, Netflix is ruining another anime. Which one is it this time? Yu Yu Hakusho, a classic. Oh. Sure. But they're live actioning it because that's all that they do anymore. Terrible. Pirating it is is morally justified. But watching it isn't. It's gonna be terrible. No, I mean pirating anything from Netflix is justified until their reign of tyranny ends. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, we got in there. She's out cold, I'm guessing. Yes, yes, and her stomach is starting to wail. She's of course wearing like an open, exposed, uh, like it's visible. Which might be part of it. Um, anyone of you like good with medicine? Well, let me check. I have not checked my medicine skill yet. I don't know if they can. Mm, no, I, I have a zero. zero. Yeah. That's actually good enough to know what's going on. Um, she has, when you receive common elite treatment, if they don't feel the particular need to do any fancy patch jobs, they'll they'll have like what's called a seal scar, where it's you can tell there's a scar, but it's very faint and it's easy to take care of and doesn't take as much effort. Um, she definitely had a surgery, and something got put in there. 
No one noticed it. So do we know now how to disarm the bomb? Well, it's a zip, uh, zip bomb, which means it's a zip charge, which means it's electrically based. So if I get it out of her, can I take enough charge to prevent its detonation? Drain the battery? Okay, yeah. so this is a zip drive. You know that your electro powers touching one of those is bad because those things are near infinite energy. Like, the one that's in your suit has, like, a whole bunch of Transformers for it to work with you at all. Okay, so don't do that. <laughs> Unless you want to get deep fried. Does that disable the bomb? It might, but it will also that kill That would her. probably kill me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it I would need somewhere to put the energy afterwards and act like a conduit. Unfortunately, step I... one is going to be getting the bomb out of her, because you can't really work on it from here. Okay. This might not go too well. But neither of you guys have medical skill, right? I don't think so. I have no. mechanical skill. I work on spaceships, not alien species. Pull him. No, no, no. I... Okay, I'm going to get on mental YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I Find the video back. Some, which some I'm going to pull with out me. my spearhead. I Which imagine that you can find sharp. reference material, yes. You take out your spearhead and get closer, when suddenly, like, a wall slides out of the ground. Um, the studio has basically veriform properties, and you can make objects come out and in and out. And he pushes mm -hmm. you back, because the other ones who are standing by can see that her stomach bulges up as if a spear is pushing out of her, and then four little claw legs cut her open. Oh, that's uh -oh. not good. And this tiny, very flexible-looking spider thing climbs out of her. Mostly it's a giant glowing ball within which it's the face of a person. That's an interesting... It's then is not The veriform <laughs> objects that are making up this <coughs> set begin to dissolve as Breath of Dawn starts to crackle on the speakers and then the mindscape. What do they say? Um, slowly getting forcefully overwritten by some sort of Eidolon, by the looks of it. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so it's that <laughs> kind of bomb. Well, the bomb is still actually a bomb. It's just that inside of the bomb is a person. I want to shoot the person. Riding. You want to shoot the bomb? That, that's oh, going to blow the eye. <gasps> wait, hold on. Uh, do You said there is a window. Yes, there's a big... There is, there is a window. Okay, fair enough. Does it have some sort of emergency hatches? What do like you if mean? it breaks, will it like close itself? If it breaks, itself? will it close itself? Will it seal itself? Yeah, How quickly will it... You imagine that it probably does have an emergency shutdown since this is like an intentional window, but that probably requires that all the software works, which at this moment you're not sure. Okay, is there any room with a window nearby? Because what I'm going to do is grab this thing and I'm going to chuck it through the window so hard that it goes into its own mm -hmm. orbit and then I'm going to shoot it with the gun. Oh, that's hilarious. I know. Wait, no. Wait, here's what we do. I got a plan, because it can move. It has legs now. Yes. I'm going to make an EMP. Uh, wait, what? Are you harding against EMPs? Sort of. I'm sorry, whoa. <laughs> I mean, as, as you all are clicking... I'm just worried that my detonator or something. As you all are clicking this up, the cameras are yeah. starting to reactivate. Uh-oh. And the little, the little face starts to project upwards. Um... Did any of you particularly, like, read the briefing? I probably would have read through it on the way here. I actually like yes. reading. I am a, ma I'm a machine. It's a TXT file in my head. I can pull it up right now. Even. Did you, like, read, read it? Which is to say, can you roll me an intellect check? Or an education uh, check, I guess. Read through it, yeah. Mine are all zero, so sure, Did why you see, not? It's only a six. It's not that hard to, to get this one right. Let's, let, let's see how bad I got a five. Let's see if Como remembers it. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, part Seven. of this is just interpreting the image as well. That's right now. So, oh yeah, Kalmo has like a photographic memory, so he probably would still and remember Kalmo's this. not even better. Too. Still. <laughs> well, Kalmo's memory is literally a photograph. So, what you are looking at is, um, Mimar. Oh, okay. You remember him? You kinda? Um, his name, yes. Uh, yes, uh, the guy who died, uh, the hero of uh, the Resistance, if I can call it that. I, I really appreciate it. The Palm's really throwing out the heavy hitters and hitting me right in the feels with the, with how good he knows his stuff. Oh. Is this what it feels like when people care? 
Yeah, it's in the note. It's we all care. Note. Actually, it's it's in my section for Zyla's notes, actually, which is funny. Thanks, yeah, because I was inter <laughs> interacting with them more. Yes. The individual you were looking at is a very corrupted thanagram of Mimar Zoran, and he begins to give a speech about freedom and liberty and about, oh, he, he, it's a corrupted thanagram. It's just spouting Trump-esque bullshit. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but it gets people riled up. I mean, yeah. Can I try to shut it down with my brain? You're gonna get overridden too, probably. It's, it's a bomb. You're dealing with a. It's yeah, but terrible. I want to turn off like the projector part because it's gotta have multiple parts to it. It's not like a bomb. Can is you only electrosy? You're, you're doing some very precise surgery here. What do Como and Palum do? As as I, like I said, if there is any sort of like toilet or any sort of side room with an actual window. I'm going to go lo go in there, lock the door, and then chuck it through the window, then shoot it. That was my plan. I mean, if you absolutely want to, you could probably just huck them out the se the, the window here, and that will work. Yeah, I know, but it's going to probably cause damages. That's why I asked if the windows have, like, the emergency shutters. Let's see, I have two options. I can either damage the window or let this whole place blow. <laughs> Man, this reminds me of Batman. Like, sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. That was fun watching that with you. <laughs> Also, there's my roll. I got a 12. I mean, technically, there is also the... Uh, what was cold again? Um, gosh. The, oh, the projector will start to crackle and, and, like, it shatters. But it will then try to use the veriform nature of the room to full, form a new one. But it takes some time because it doesn't know what the fuck it's doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Here's the plan. It's busy now. What we're gonna do... Metal Man. Yes. I want you... To get, did you bring the big gun? Yes. Good. Okay. Start aiming. Okay. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna get my bow. I'm gonna quickly rapid fire some arrows into the window, and I'm gonna just like soccer kick this thing through, and then you shoot it. <laughs> Pollum. <laughs> you sure? As this all is going on, your character suddenly has an epiphany, which oh. you as a player might have had too. Uh, this no. space station has a zip drive built into it, and it's going into the wiring. Mm -hmm. Although I should note that the zip plant that's built into the corpus is significantly more powerful than this bomb, if it were to be used as such. Yes. Which is to say that so someone should probably, probably get try to detonate that too. You should probably try to flush the system while you're doing this as well. You're the man in the chair. You're good at this. <laughs> So you want me to reroute the power of the bomb into the spaceship, into the station? No, you want to, uh, it's trying to take over the zip drive, uh, the zip charge in the station. Zip plant. Oh, it's yeah. trying to, oh. Okay. It's trying to make the yeah. main power plant also a bomb. Like, Breath of Dawn is no longer responding because whatever he is, is like pushed into a corner by this thing expanding. Mm. Because what this is, is the corrupted thanagram. And it's kind of like a zombie virus. It... It's strong, but it doesn't have any real guidance outside of, like, the core of what it is. Which, considering that it was probably taken off of a dying corpse, is that it hates the commonality and wants to free everyone and cause damage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, yeah, you gotta try to get it out of there. Yes, I, I'm going to try to... Uh, not constrict, but... Uh, put barriers to, to, to limit its expansions, in that case. You know, I was kind of hoping that you would take, like, the the hard route, but this is actually the easiest way to handle the situation. <laughs> this is what happens when people know what they're doing with tech sometimes. This, this is what happens when someone has a has a better idea than just keep attacking it directly. But yes, putting up barriers is something you, you are capable of doing so effectively that you can probably keep him busy while your friends are taking care of the Thanagram itself. Yes. Okay. So, so I'm going to quickly fire into the window with my uh, powerful modified bow. To break the wind, the uh, to break it. I find then, it amusing. Bam. I find it amusing that you insist on using a bow on space age glass windows. Yeah. Although to be fair, you are using space age. <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm using are. this is like a Horizon Zero Dawn bow. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. You walk to into it. the room and the guy's like, "Excuse me, you want me to make you what?" And it's like, "It's a bow. It's like, it's a what?" So it's like a. It's like a project, a uh, slug thrower, kind of, but it has a string. He he pull, he grabs like the handle and the, the string. And he pulls them both at once, like he's like doing a like stretches in the machine. It's like how does this? And then he puts it over his head and clinks onto his neck. Yeah, it's really hard to get my gear made. Ancient technology confounds me. 
Which is true, because technically speaking, the bow will be of a very low tech level, so you would like like a massive minus on it. It is archaic. No, that mostly just affects how it interacts with armor. Oh, no, wait, no, excuse me, that's half Starfinder that did that. Anyway, I imagine that you can take care of this if you can make me the roll. Because it's still okay, so a glass window. For the damage? Yeah. So give me an aim. Give me give me an aimed roll, because I imagine that you take your time lining the shot up. So 2d6 plus... Como, you're expected to punt this thing, was it? No, oh, I'm punting uh, it. He's going to shoot it once yeah. it's out of the station with the, with the mega gun. <laughs> the reason he's not uh, punting it is that way he can keep aiming. Yeah, cool. Okay, so with my archaic green... Uh, one that's plus three. Don't forget your ducks. Yep. So, God, I am rolling awful today. <laughs> <coughs> so that's uh, seven effect. Fun fact: When you roll more than six, uh, it's considered a great success, and you usually get to add some flair. So we'll just say that it works. You shatter the glass window. Or at the very least, create, like, a hole. I don't know how fancy this glass is, if it has, like, special paneling so it only shatters in one place at once. It creates a hole. There's a problem. The little spider isn't going to sit still, and air is starting to rapidly leave this place. Yeah. Zella's still wearing the mask. Should we yeah, use for yep. but there's at least one other person in the room who can't breathe. Yeah, that's Although, how we try to do this quick. Like, her gut might have got bursted open with a, uh, whatever that thing is, but <laughs> she's still alive. Besides, I had a plan for it trying to get away. Hmm? It's got little uh, metal legs, right? Yeah when, yeah, when you get too close, it starts to scurry. Oh, I'm sorry. Are those magnetic? Oh, they're like probably sure magnetic. I like I'm going to electrify it to my leg and then turn my power off while it's coming at me. And just kick it. Okay. So. <laughs> it's hilarious. So the problem here is. That while that generally works, much of this thing is actually non magnetic. Not all metals are magnetic, by the way. I've been hmm. told. That's true. Hmm. Damn you, dielectric metals. Yeah. Wait, it's made of gold? Damn it. Or aluminum. Probably aluminum or something fancy plastilisk. Or as all of you people say, aluminium. It's... Can I have my little drone latch onto it instead? You work. didn't bring your little drone. You didn't tell me. It is I'm with looking, me. I'm, I'm, I'm... Mm. <sighs> we had an hour. How would I leave my property back? I kept my gun. I kept my stuff. I yeah, brought, but you, brought were, you went on. A... Come on, yeah. your drone is not equipped for space flight. You would have yeah, to like put not, it in but... your bag. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what I did. Yeah, it, <sighs> it's probably just not with us. Okay, so even if you had your drone with you, what would you make it do? Not as as all of you are like chasing this little scurrying spider bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's still giving a speech, by the way. If you want to, I can recite whatever Hitler said during that thing. Oh my god. <laughs> no, don't do, don't do Hitler, Hitler. Do uh, Charlie Chaplin's thing. Or the dictator. Fake Hitler. Yes. But yeah. Uh, so, goal is to either somehow stun it or use something else we have to slow down so we can just kick it. Oh, I have the stun gun. Would that stun it without blowing it up? Well, you have to aim. We want to make sure you hit it. Okay, fair enough. I mean, we it's going to be in orbit. We're going to have more than one shot for this. It's going to be small, though. I used to... What was the quote exactly? I, I, I used to shoot Wampus on my... My T-16. <laughs> T-16, yes. All right, well, if if you need help, I can help. But, like, I, I guess I'm aiming. Oh, it's actually literally just called a zip field scanner. Cool. Um... Good old buddy old pal Pollum. Mm -hmm. As 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 they're fucking around in there, um, <laughs> it seems that the, the Thanagram, probably frustrated with your very effective way of containing it, um, its zip drive is starting to warm up. The little uh -oh. spider boy. They can probably see like the slight increase in light, but you have to think fast. Because you don't have to shoot it anymore to blow it up at this point. Yep. Now, of course, Pollum can probably give you like a lovely nerd techno talk as to what exactly is happening to cause it to explode, but not really. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so you're running after this thing. <laughs> so can I use my electricity at all to stun it? I do want to remind you that this thing is, like, covered in blood. Because it did burst out of someone. 
God, that makes this a lot of conductive. That makes it really creepy. <laughs> Austin for small. Austin for okay, one, so yes. you try to electrocyte a lightning bolt. That, you know what? Go for it. Well, I'm just trying to do like an, uh, you know, like Thunder Wave from Pokemon. Give it a go. Give it a go. Roll your electrocyte. Buy electric. Add it all up. I cannot roll well today, apparently. Cool. How many points are you spending on this to like stun it? I was going to spend all of my bat. Uh, well, too much would just probably cause it to anything. I was going to spend two on my battery. 2d6, roll me. It's a small droid. It probably will shut down with enough, but you just got to roll it. Oof. You give it a good old blast, and its leg actuators begin to smolder. If you could smell the air, it would smell like burning rubber, but all the smoke gets sucked out. Um, good old Zoya probably like rolls over once before she falls motionless as the pressure is starting to reach her. I don't know how depressurization works. I don't live in space. Depressurization works. Uh, the pressure would fall relatively quickly. Anyway, it's so motionless. Okay. Now yeah. I'm going to soccer kick it. In addition, because it's been temporarily disabled, soon enough the thing will start to... Okay, cool. We can soccer kick it. All right. I think that's an athletics dexterity check. Yay, I'm good at that. I hope you are, because it's not going to be easy to kick a fucking spider bot into a hole. It's not aerodynamic. That's not that's not an official standard-sized ball. We see all the air is pulling it out. I think it's also extremely humorous that you insist on kicking a bomb. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, don't forget that you have athletic dexterity is both the skill and your actual dexterity score modifier. <clears throat> so it's going to be both. And it's actually pretty good. Because trying to pull off here. Okay, cool. There's one more thing I'm going to need. Hmm. I'm going to need a lock roll. Because you're kicking oh, no. an actively detonating bomb out. It might detonate a little too soon. Excellent. I think I think we're done here, and we're ready for the epilogue. Can, can I get a boon? <laughs> how, about, blow up. How, how about you impress me? How about you impress Dai Ni San Go, the jackass for once? <clears throat> I, need to, <clears throat> I need to get in the mood. Sorry, I need to straighten my tie. I'm not wearing a tie, but I mentally straighten it. <clears throat> Official news report. It has been two weeks ever since the Fivers have officially surrendered after the capture of their head and leader, Vargo. God, I've, now I forgot his name. Vaga Bargo Jr. Vaga Bargo. <laughs> Following the almost potent detonation and the errant broadcast, as it has been called, the situation regarding the Fivers has lost much of its public appeal. The Fivers, especially after killing one of the hostages, just have lost much of their popular opinion. In addition, the effective and efficient response of local commonality forces have demonstrated the efficacy and the workmanship thereof. However, the situation has forced all sex security to completely shut down operations and allow comedy per commonality personnel to handle security from this point forward. As a result, the Five Nations plan has been put completely on hold, and the Un World Unity Council has accelerated proceedings. Negotiator Daini Sango has said that the following. The situation will not change too much. We will try to preserve as much as we can, but of course sacrifices must be made, as this culture has demonstrated itself willing to perform the most abrasive acts. The temporarily disabling of the Mindscape node and the extreme damage dealt to its stage section, as well as several broadcasting stations, has demonstrated their willingness to cause damage, and as such, all weapons will immediately be confiscated. We will commence all necessary actions to disarm the populace and begin implementation of our new standards as soon as possible. We assure the population that this will be minimally disruptive and that quality of life will improve significantly. Dainia Sango has refused to give any further clarifications as to what his immediate plans are. Moreover, Breath of Dawn is expected to reboot in a month when all necessary reparations have been made and the station can be used as a stage once more. You are sitting. I imagine in the little inn you picked out for yourself, or maybe just a nice comfortable bar, which means oh, you're probably God, sitting. Died. Which means you probably are sitting in like a spa. The camera pans back from from it as Nawasha is like holding her head in her hand. I can't believe I technically got fired and hired in the span of an hour. It's called fa failing upwards. Get used to it. <laughs> hey, she, I think she did pretty okay. Mm. She, of of all of us, she was the most confident person here. So yeah, credit work, credit is due. Holy shit. 
Well, like I said, the drinks are on me, and she raises a glass feebly. <laughs> uh, man, she can down that fast. All right. I guess that's uh, you, huh? Because now that I work for Commonality Security, she looks over her shoulder where her old OLSEC badge is. I guess that technically means... I get to know that you guys are planning to leave tomorrow. Another planet, another problem, huh? Yes. It's kind of the world we live in. And by world, I mean all of them. So what was it again? What was going on over there? I heard it was uh, going to be one of those deep cover things. Like, Common Alley hasn't even established themselves there yet. Or done their It'll discovery like going thing. Home. I mean, you can fill in the details if you want to. Like, have some fun. Yeah, it's like I'm going back home. It's a new planet they just found some people on. People really don't like high tech. So we get to find a new suit for this guy. I'm just going to wear someone's skin or something. <laughs> I figured we could put like your AI core in like a synthetic body. I mean, that wouldn't make sense, I suppose. What do you think yes. about giant spiders? Um, oh god, not again. I love giant spiders. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping that you guys would get that gold bastard killed, because after everything that he said over the last few days, I can't help but feel that he would rather see me on a burning pyre than... <sighs> As the local had, yay. I'm gonna put my hand on her shoulder. Just to remember, sometimes miracles do happen. Don't <laughs> give up hope, he might explode. Can you imagine the cuts over? The building just moves <laughs> one, 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 one step on the stairs, one inch, and he just falls over, falls into pieces. Something. You just take one step, and then he family guy <laughs> falls his way down. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry. Every night he will wake up and step on a Lego. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of Mimar has moved into this <laughs> Lego brick. I am now immune to stepping on Legos too. That's kind of awesome. Como, why did you get... Is this the true reason you have metal feet? No, it's not the metal feet. It's like I meant out of character. I'm actually immune to stepping on Legos now. How did that happen? Uh, <laughs> Lego pulled out. Completely. They stopped uh, <laughs> operating. You're allowed to physically, I'm incapable of stepping on a Lego now. You're legally allowed to arrest any Lego you come across. Well, yeah, they pretty much said, fuck them kids, and left. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, fair enough. After I can all, stop on Legos after, now, though. <laughs> after all, the Russian army runs on Legos. Exactly. Pretty much. Ugh. Although, to be fair, I do like the idea of, like, a gun that's made out of Legos. I mean, there are guns made out of Legos that are working. I mean, yeah, they can make it out of 3D printers, too, so. But, good old Wash kind of takes her moment. She She is clearly in a hell of a place. On the plus side, you guys get to go and have a lovely vacation. Meanwhile, I have to listen to that bastard seven days a week. Well, don't worry. I do happen to have some stuff. Let me just see if we can get him reassigned, Mr. I if would like to get it here. get him reassigned, I will buy you drinks for every day you're here. Oh my God. <sighs> you know, I did record his whole thing saying that we should go and do ter allow terrorism to go off. And the plus side, I get to go to the space station soon. It'll be my first time in space. Breath of Dawn said he wants to do an interview. Since he can't get you on the interview anymore, since you're reassigned and all. Well, I'm sure your interview will go better than the last one. Mm. Her eyes turn towards the glass that faces outside. I'll be honest, I thought this would go over far worse, but... I guess we'd... I guess everyone kind of woke up when that bomb went off, huh? Yeah, when well, you can see a bomb from uh, from the surface, kind of impressive. Pollum would actually fully recall the details because the spaceship you were in felt the shock. Like whatever, it's not that high up, and the bomb probably launched like thousands of bits of debris downwards. So this was heard for miles around, and the flash was probably seen from across the entire planet because that's what it's meant to do. <laughs> I'll be honest. When I woke up and saw a goddamn star in the sky, I thought I was going to fucking die. Or at the very least, you had. How the hell did you make it out of that anyway? Because it tore, like, the whole place apart. Like someone took a big old bite out of the station. So, a chunk of metal was coming at me. 
and an altruistic space dolphin happen to jump right in the way at the last second. You know, I'd almost believe you. Now, nah, what actually happened was the shockwave pushed him, points to the robot, in front of me. <laughs> and he actually took most of the brunt, so my squishy parts didn't explode. Fair enough. So, Mr. Robot Man, yes. your fleshier friend and your other half, how did they make it out again? Because I recall they got hit by the blast and got like sent off hurtling off into the deep black. Well, you see, um, because there was no pressure in the room at the time, the explosion didn't actually like transmit through a medium. Well, it's basically like a radiation explosion. Oh, in that sense, well, I guess they were like in the shadow of me. No, he, he's talk. They're talking about like the ship Pollen was on. And oh, we were like in the asthenosphere, so there was still a meeting. It was probably in the shadow of the station then. Uh, if you, is this like a regular occurrence? Are you going to go to a plan that doesn't even have a Mindscape instance and still blow up a space station? We're gonna try really hard not to. I mean, I actually, if, look if the there is way. one, this is not. This is there is a non-zero chance. I think they have like what's it called, emergency auxiliary, my, oh, something like that. They have one of those baby stations for people like you going on the ground. There's no research. Yeah. Day. I would like to go there. It sounds very cozy, you know. It's got a pool, and a pool table, and like a little nature reserve. It sounds cool to go to. Yeah. Hey, they have like an alien. Do you guys abduct and pro people? No. It, it sounded like they had like a dissection station or something. Or oh, whatever. That's I don't... not our. That has never been our mission, I think. There if, might be like a department that does if that. If one but... of you happen to own like one of those spinning UFOs I read about, I would love to see it. Dude, but... I would love one of those. I'm... You know what? You know what? You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Um, connection. Make... Shift sentience. They're highly influential, but they're ultimately powerless. My old ship. I'm gonna summon. I'm gonna make them a call. Can you can you can you buzz the uh, control tower real quick? <laughs> well, I shouldn't keep you too much longer. If I recall correctly, your flight's leaving, and you'll be in fuck off space for however long it takes to get there. Oh, I mean, send a message. Don't be a stranger. Holy shit, Discord is a thing. Hey, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work my way up, and maybe I'll be your boss someday, and then I'll see you more often. I mean, that hey, works. Hey, if any of the people here who could have been our boss, I'd rather have you than Dildo. All right. <laughs> it's time to get up and shake hands and say goodbye. Hey. But as we go, epilogue for all the characters. Shall we go? Yes. You want to go first or the NPCs first? Let's go NPCs. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, they always save the main characters for the last one. Blaga Bargo eventually reunites with his son when he is finally released from the rehabilitation program. His son, having received proper anger management treatments, has sort of seen the errors of his way, and since the commonality has calmed down when Dainese and Go went away, everything is resolved, and the family came together. Eventually, Noasha showed up as well, and they had a great time. Reuniting and, well... Probably nothing flourishing, because she's probably still pretty pissed. He tried to blow up and had hostages. That, that's something you can't get past in a relationship too easily. Mm -hmm. The nice guy out at White Hand who defended you from a bunch of punks trying to hell yeah, who knows. The punk that Silas saved. I actually made notes for him, but we never got to use him again. Because she kind of left town after that, so... Uh, where is he in this? Developments, I think. There you go. Old Nora, she went on to continue cooking. And because the commonality really likes, like, rustic old ladies, she eventually... Well, she didn't open a, a restaurant because she's not like that, but she did, like, cook for lots of people who all she got to enjoy the unique taste of whatever the hell she's cooking. She enjoyed the fact that the commonality provides a whole new swath of ingredients to toss into a pan recklessly. It's amazing. Then we have... Jabba and Nash, the Colombian Colombian that um, Zyla saved. He was, he, basically he's an orphan, and he, he, his life was a whole mess, so he was kind of just suckered into it with promises of things getting better and the commonality, and all, he, he equated the commonality with all sex, so the whole idea was that he's kind of pissed off, he, he ends up in the right place when everything ends up alright, situation's fine, good old, oh god, there's the heck, the propaganda man, which is the guy that was at the station, he just started handing out other flyers because apparently he just had a knack for the stuff. 
He got hired. <laughs> he had to do something. They didn't Discovered... even believe in this shit. They just paid him. <laughs> Discovery job became his real job. Gzika, the frustrated cop that Zyla pissed the fuck off, um, he was fired. Take fuck. He got himself killed when he drank too much and decided to drive off a cliff. Okay, that makes me feel a little worse. He Bonnie and Clyde did it. It's just how sometimes things go. I mean, to be fair, he got fired. Because all sex security was proven to be wholly incompetent. And so, you know, a guy like him who was already pretty angry, seemed like the way out to him. Not every story gets to be happy. That's fine. Ours almost wasn't. Noacha Homchompa, the lovely lady, does in fact work her way up the ladder. She proves herself to be a willing and competent individual, and has exactly the qualities that the commonality likes. Although she was initially a little shaken and stirred, the situation that she, you have brought her through has made her a stronger person, and eventually she handles the security of the new United Five Nations. She also helps kind of direct it culturally to make sure that it integrates better. Dainy Sengo does get reassigned, but not in the way you think he does. During the more extensive investigation, it was discovered that Dai Nisen Go might have had some involvement in some things that we're not going to talk about because she didn't interact with any of it. But suffice to say, they weren't too satisfied with how he was doing things. And so they decided to take on a new ambassador who had a better... L let's just put it like this. He made a mess when you left, and mm -hmm. someone had to pick up the pieces, and so they sent over someone who was a bit nicer because it seemed to work better. Some say that he currently still has to deal with... Let's just say that he has to put up with his own version of retail, as he is sent to a planet that also requires an ambassador for integration. But, oh boy, are they hard to deal with. Even he cannot crack a smile and yells at where he has to deal with. But hey, you know, he has to learn his lesson and grow as a person. Just like Wam <laughs> Chompa. And so our main heroes set off to a new planet. It's a desert world ravaged by the storms. In some places, advanced technology, which they consider magic, provide oases and magical mountains of infinite materials. It is a place where they effectively become d d adventurers as they must observe the situation and guide them to a better direction. It's, uh... <gasps> what, what are your cover stories? Who are you on this new planet? Did you get inspired by that? that I told you about. And I know proper anger management sounds bad, but I would like to remind you that the commonality like, actually offers anger management. Like, rehabilitation and prison systems for them are actually really nice. It's actually neat. So I mean, yeah, what are your guys' cover stories? Because this is how we just asked. We're going tangents. I mean, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of curious. Is it possible to work ourselves into the history and culture, quote-unquote? I mean, that's what the common... Gaslighting their history is a little bit of a... Mm, but hey, if it helps... I mean, if anything, it's like, oh, cool, it's just a guy who is always wearing armor, some sort of, like, that sort of person. I'm just cosplaying, maybe. That could work. You're a golem. Yes, oh, that works, too. Because this planet basically follows endless legend rules. That works perfectly fine, as long as it can work within the mythology, then yes. Hello, I'm a golem. I'm a hunter of monsters who came to look for the giant spiders, honestly, because fuck giant spiders. <laughs> Raised for years to track down the spiders and show them that spiders are actually stupid. The giant spiders mm -hmm. actually turn out to be massive repair robots. <gasps> That's even cooler. That's even cooler, yeah. But everyone is Rise and Xylodon. Xylodon. <laughs> Wait, Xylodonus would be a dinosaur name. No, the, uh, I I, I kind of like that idea, yeah. It's because with your electro powers, you could control them probably, or just shut them down easily. It'll give you some good reputation. What about Pollum? You're sent to this uh, planet to help out. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to. I guess, you don't want to. Yes, uh, uh, it's going to be a bit late for me, so I'm kind of floating down. <laughs> But That's in the okay. end, all things ended upright. Or at the very least, old Kennedy Crater became a nice part of the commonality. A good part. A picturesque part. And although many commonality citizens are still called squints from time to time, the vast technological improvements and the building of some proper Mindscape infrastructure has shown everyone the lights that can come. Although, to be fair, they're, they're, they're on the what people like to call the better contract, where you're part of the commonality, but you're like on the good... You've like, you got a lot more freedom, a lot more wiggle room, and it's really helped things out. 
Hmm. Who would their new boss guy be, anyway? You know, got any fun ideas for who this new nice guy is? For this planet? Yeah, because there's a Dainis and Go was sent away, so who replaced him? So I want this one to be silver. <laughs> and they're like, not a douche. We already covered that part. Mm hmm. So maybe they were an administrator for multiple small uh, things that went really well. So they got put here because they need someone who actually had this sense of empathy in their metallic shell. Nice. And so they were eventually assigned to this one in order to make up for the fact that a lot of bad stuff had been going on. So we slowly zoom out of old Kennedy Crater. As new buildings are built, as time passes, as an old world slowly modernizes. And as another world must soon enter the commonality, it's difficult to colonize a planet to take care of the pre-commonality integration phase. Introducing technology slowly and opening the eyes to better memes. It's a long project, and it will probably be the first real multi-generational project that Xylon undertakes, and it's like, it's gonna be something. It's gonna be real Just weird me. when you live hundreds of years and you actually use those years to change the world. Although for Como, it's probably just like another day. And for Pollum, it's like another day. Probably. It's Silas' first longevity package, man. Yeah, because I'm I'm young. I am 63, technically. Yeah, but age doesn't really matter for you. You're a machine. Well, in a sense, yeah. I mean, Silas is like, like literally a wizard with her electro powers in this world. <laughs> next time, what are we even playing next time? As old That's a good question. I know Como is aiming for a vampire of the masquerade. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, uh, come on, I'm 30. <laughs> uh, in the game, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, you're 21, actually. Excuse me? Saddle, saddle but under my age thing, I have 30. <laughs> on my career path. Weird. I guess I screwed it up somewhere. On oh, your biological age is 21. Whoops. Yeah, you're 30. <laughs> you're not even middle age yet. <laughs> Como in the meantime is like sixty three, and I think I think Florence is like sixty six. So yeah, <laughs> like twice yeah. as old. Which makes sense why everything is so silly because we're literally just geriatrics on, 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 on commonality standards. You're both babies. Don't forget that yeah. like fifty years old is where you technically graduate as an adult. Mm -hmm. I'm still not an adult yet. But commonality standards, I don't know. I mean, technically, you didn't have the uprising upbringing, so it's like, it's weird. Well, Como want to wear Vampire the Mask. He wants to go into the cracks of new neo Look, New York. I want to be Malkavian. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, I'm up for Vampire the Masquerade, or hell, even trying like Cyberpunk 2020. Cyberpunk would be pretty fun, actually. Uh, yes, and um, sorry again, but I probably won't be there next week. No, no, that is fine. Okay. It's fine. If you have a busy week, you got a busy week. I don't That's know. It's 2020, so so. Hmm. Not so busy. It's. Uh... You can also try Cyberpunk Red, it's... which is like a slightly different system. That is. What are you saying, uh, Poland? Uh, yes, no, it's uh, I, 